What's the story? What are you, Popeye? Where the fuck you been, Popeye? Where the fuck you been? You don't answer I've been all around. No what's, the, what's the question? You picked her up Friday. You, you're living over there like a doctor. You have you get the robe yet? No. When are you going to get the robe? I'm waiting. What do you walk around? You go with boxer shirts? Those yeah. fucking little things you wear with your big fucking feet with no socks on? <laughs> huh? The mom bought me sandals this weekend. Did she really? Yeah. The, nice. She came back. She gave us. She bought the whole family she sandals. She bought you those Mexican sandals. They make it over there from Tijuana all the way to San Diego, does it? Yep. She made me no tacos this weekend, homemade oh. tortillas. How many did you throw down? Only four. We were how good. many calories? I don't know how many those are, to be honest. Not, not much. Book? It's only carne asada. Did you and put them in the fitness book? Uh, not, not. We had a little bit of a cheat weekend. All right. What else has happened? Where have you been? You went to the fucking... We went to Oddball, which was very fun. I saw a bunch of people there. They were very nice. Um, people recognize you at Oddball? Yeah, there were a couple of cool people there. Sure. Because, the I mean, they always go see you in Irvine. All right. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a great weekend. It's fucking hot, but yeah. You had a good time at Oddball? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, I'd never been to like an outdoor comedy show, and a bunch of people did really good. So it was it was a lot of fun. It was it's a great different time. though. Yeah, it was. It's more impersonal. Like it's even a hundred dollar ticket, you're thirty fucking forty yards away. More than that. More than that. Right. Yeah, it was. We were in like the loge area, um, but it was fun. It was just I really like comedy shows because like it's. It's kind of like the difference between watching it on TV and watching it in a club. Like, the entire club is supposed to be laughing. But with 15,000 people, 7,500 aren't paying attention. And the, some of them are going to get drinks. There was a baby in front of us. And, like, every time I see, every time I'm anywhere, I think of stuff like what you would say. And the baby was fine. It didn't cry or anything. But I'm like, I kept thinking of what you say about, like, how, you, how you're raising your daughter. I'm like... Get a babysitter or don't come, because the mom spent half the thing walking around with them. What's the fucking use? What yeah. if what if the fucking gunman goes crazy and starts shooting people? You brought your fucking baby, like Batman, when the guy brought the fucking baby to Batman midnight viewing. Why would you bring your fucking baby to Batman? There's no relatives. You can't wait till tomorrow to see fucking Batman. <laughs> you know this is what I'm talking yeah. about. How's your Eleanor movie? Carrigan in the Am motherfucking I to house. Weigh in on this? This that's crazy. Yeah, that's no, why this you referred crazy. to the baby as it. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't yeah, do that. That's rude yeah, to be. I'm, I'm sorry, all baby listeners. They brought it. <laughs> so well, it was just, I felt so bad. It was a cute baby. We were like, we were messing around with it before the cute. shoot. Yeah. Before yeah. the show, but. But Joey's right. They're all cute until somebody starts fucking shooting. Shoot. You know, listen, I'm not saying people are going to shoot you. You're saying, Joey, why are you saying that? Crazy. This is your child. You know, when I was married 20 years ago, she had to fucking bug up her ass to go see pretty women. Me, from a consumer side, when I sit somewhere and a baby starts crying, I get agitated. So yeah. here I have a baby now. Who the fuck am I to bring this baby to the movie theater? Ten minutes in, whether Richard Gere's on stage or the other pretty bitch, the baby started crying. I got to get up and walk outside. Yeah. It defeats the purpose. It's the law of diminishing returns. You know what? I'll stay home and watch the baby. Go see fucking pretty women. And that's right. how I feel about all those things. You know, if you're going to fly with a fucking baby, guess what? People want to sleep at night when they take a red eye. Don't show up with 22 fucking kids at night crying. <laughs> yeah. People want to fucking sleep, man. Yeah. You know, it's just little courtesy things. You want to fly with your baby? Get on that motherfucker at 6 in the morning. Then I'm like, I can't get mad at you. Yeah. There's little fucking things. A nice restaurant, really, you got to bring your child. A comedy show, it's that important to you to see fucking Sarah Silverman. That you got to bring your fucking baby. They had language, no? Yeah. A comedy show. Boy, what are you doing? Not, what are you teaching him? It's not even that. The baby's half retarded. He's there in his fucking coma. <laughs> yeah. You know, my How daughter's you know? 20 months. What the <laughs> fuck does she know what Louis C.K. is saying or what Sarah Silverman's saying? She's just sitting there with her head looking around going, why can't I fucking run? And How was, old was the baby? Baby. Less was, than six like, months. Yeah. Oh, it was oh, a baby. Shit. It was an infant baby. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy because I, I, I'd, I'd be interested to see what two comics have to say about it. And I had a great time. The show was mostly great, but there were a few people there where it was like, if there was like a, if like, if like, let's say Comedy Central made a list of top ten comics, they'd be on it, and you're supposed to like them, but they didn't do well. And like, you two weren't there. There were comics who could have been there for a lot less money, and our tickets would have been less. But it was like, if you're a fan, like a generic fan of comedy, would think those were the best people. And not that Dan Cook isn't funny. But I called my mom and told her about the show. She's like, oh, is Dane Cook there? <laughs> it's like stuff like my mom is going to think he, those comics should be Dane there. Dane Cook wasn't there? Well, because you're Dane Cook wasn't there that night. Yeah, well, yeah. Isn't, she loves Dane Cook. Isn't but. he the president of Massachusetts or something? He used to be. Who, your dad? <laughs> no, Dane Cook. <laughs> oh, I saw I saw a picture of your dad with a club named 
Yeah. Cyan. Mike, who, 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 that who? wasn't that wasn't his club. He he worked in nightclubs for like twenty five years. He did like promotions he, and shit. He, he did he did man. singles parties. He Ooh. he uh, right right before online dating came out and killed it. But is he is he the one that's in that picture? It says Cyan with yeah. his high heels and shit. He had you high could, heels on? You could tell that motherfucker had <laughs> a grandma. We're all short, yeah. You could tell that motherfucker had a grandma blow in his pocket, too. Oh, yeah. Hell, you yeah. You could tell. That yeah. motherfucker was the real deal. How could you tell? Well, did Dickie he? Si- yeah, just, you could just tell. He had that outfit on on a Tuesday night. Yeah. You wouldn't put he that was, fucking suit on. Like those big have, front pockets. Yeah, it was, it was like from the 80s, yeah. right? The picture was Or maybe like, early 90s. But he was yeah. he was on radio and, and that stuff for 20 years, so must he must have. What's up with you, Eleanor? Suit Carrigan? jacket with patches on his elbow? No patches. Oh. No patches. But always, he had always a the huge glasses, huge <laughs> huge Jufro. Always a pleasure to see Eleanor Carey. I bumped into it at the Laugh Factory. I like getting women on the show. I like women's perspective on comedy. I like women's perspective on life. But it's just too tough to find women that'll come in on a Monday night. They get offended. The language. Friends? Reefer smoke. Lee, you know, it's all different things. I know nothing offends you. <laughs> I've known you now for seventeen years, and uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I'm. I have the ability to get offended. Is that by what anything? Yeah. yeah. At this point, there's nothing really. We've seen a lot of faces come and go together. Way too many. I went to the store last week, two weeks ago. And yeah, you've came, been back. It's amazing. Yeah, who came running up to me but Katie, and I yeah. gave her a hug. <laughs> and I thought of all the fun nights I had, like when she came to the store. It really put the East Coast. Oh, into yeah. perspective, like when you grow up in the East Coast, there's always like five or six people that put that neighborhood into motherfucking perspective. Yeah, they go to every party, ruin it. <laughs> you know, Christmases ruin it. Perfect. Fucking bars ruin it. Yes. And Katie was that person. You always. Know? I loved her. I loved her to death. I loved her balls. Uh, I loved the fact that she was Irish and she had a nice ass and she had buck teeth and shit and fucking. <laughs> The first night she worked, well, not the first night, but the first week, I think, it was Christmas. They hired her right before Christmas, and she worked New Year's Eve in the belly room. It was a private party for Pauly Shore. She was working. Some girl was drunk and stealing her tip money, so she comes down fucking wasted mid-shift, and she's got blood all over her knuckles, and I go... What happened? And she goes, I guess I'm fired. I fucked up this girl upstairs. She was taking money out of my tip jar, Eleanor. So I'm fucking out of here. And she just left. And I'm like, uh, what? It was Paulie's assistant. And I was like, you're not fired. I'm giving you a promotion. (laughs) That's hysterical. I remember one night she chased a dude. Peter Chen? She chased a dude up a parking lot. Oh, yes. You know that parking (laughs) lot next to the comedy store? You got to run uphill? Yeah. Some dude and her were arguing, and she was at the bottom of the hill, and she kept, well, fuck you, motherfucker, and she was drunk. <laughs> and one thing led to the other, she kicked that other shoe off, and she ran up and tackled him. Oh, no. Didn't she ran, pants him or took something? Took his pants we down. We were screaming. Fucking hilarious. He's the real deal. They don't make him like her no more. It's, it's just nice to see yeah. all those people again. I was telling my wife, my wife goes, so how's it been at the store? You know, my wife was a waitress at the store. Sure. I told her Eleanor was going to be on tonight. She goes, Eleanor was the first first and I knew we were dating. <laughs> Eleanor busted us at Ralph's <laughs> at 2 in the morning and I was fighting with her because she used to get margarine. And I used to, that was. Why I'm, are you doing that? I can I understand that. Tell her, I used to go, what fight. fucking person gets margarine? <laughs> I never even met nobody. Who Only you margarine. would get in a fight about butter versus margarine. Oh my God, who eats fucking margarine? <laughs> I know, I agree. Like I agree. fucking Martians eat like, fucking margarine. <laughs> Does she now not eat margarine? Oh no, she won't even dare bring that shit to the <laughs> But I'll never forget that. So you, you said won. to us, are you guys living together? And she goes, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he just showed up one night with a bag. That's it. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Terry's a great, terrific, terrific person. Well, yeah, it must be hard to get offended because not only are you a comic, but you were a waitress at a comedy club. And, and she has nine fucking brothers. I eight have brothers. Six, I have six brothers. And, okay. s- and so nine brothers and sisters <laughs> or something like that. Oh, yeah. You don't get offended sisters. when you get hand-me-downs and... Oh, you know, in the fart in your face. Yeah. They make you come in the bathroom. They show you a piece of shit. Always. You know, yeah, that's what guys do to their sisters, man. Yeah, my brother Johnny's the worst. He's like, come on, look at this one. I had to stand up to finish it. <laughs> the fuck is wrong well, with Well, they don't you? even say nothing. Yeah. Give me a hand. There's something in the bathroom. I want you. And they lock you in the bathroom. That's why all these girls are tougher than fucking nails. Oh, yeah. They had brothers around them that tackled them. You know, when there was and I shared a room with them. There was there was eight of us in one room. Or seven of us in one room. How? We had a triple bunk bed, and then I had a mattress that pulled down underneath, and then we had a double bunk bed and a single bed, my brother Tommy. Tommy, Johnny, Charlie, 
Jimmy, Bobby, Billy, me. Holy. <laughs> so, like, I was getting hit with stiff socks every 30 seconds. It was a mess, but I didn't mind. So, six boys and three girls. Yeah. But my sisters were, like, 10 and 9 years older, like Karen and Kathleen. Karen's 10 years. Kathleen is 9 years. And they were at that age where they were like, fuck her. I don't want her in our bed. You know, so they kicked me out, and the boys were like, "Yeah, come in here." So I was like, "Hey, no one wanted to molest me or anything." It was really upsetting. <laughs> Fucking nine, six brothers. That's a. I remember dating Irish girls. That was the most complicated family system. Ever. Really? Because I feel like we're like easy. I mean, they're not, crazy. Not complicated, but in the sense that it's so. Like I dated this girl, and she's on Facebook now. <laughs> And I see her on Facebook. I dated her for maybe three months, and I, uh, I kind of cheated on her. I was a <laughs> no. sophomore, or junior in high school. I oh, kind of cheated high on her. School. You know, we were swapping spit. I was sucking her titties in the winter, but nothing <laughs> really winter. happened. You know what I'm saying? She let you suck her <laughs> tits in the alleyway in the winter. <laughs> and she had great tits. The girl I had a great body that hit it. Wow. And she was so Catholic. With the three sisters and the four gorilla brothers. So she'd let you feel her up a lot. No, there really? was no pussy, there was no ass, there was nothing. You know, I would be sucking her tits and I'd go to finger and she'd like, no. So there was a different girl that let me finger her and, you know, do crazy shit. And I cheated on her. This girl stopped talking to me. And we spoke years later and she told me, she goes, I still have your Black Sabbath Volume 4 A track. I bought you for Christmas. She goes, I refuse to give it to anybody else if you want it. And I go, why would I want to fuck an eight track? Yeah. Like, I saw it 10 years later, and we talk like friends. And she's on Facebook now. The three sisters still do shit together. It's my family. They married guys that all knew each other. Oh, wow. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they were down this show. And they put the pictures up. You know, they put the pictures up of them down Seaside, Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. They go away together. Their kids go to school together. And you look at it as... I don't know. Some people might look at it as retarded. I wish I had something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's such I a wish great community. Yeah. I had six people to go away with, and I could just leave my kids with, I don't know, and say, I don't know, yeah. drop your daughter next week. But did you get along as kids, or was it crazy? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, really? we, we okay. fought because we're Irish. We did. We fought, and we were on top of each other. We were in a, a South Philly row home, so it's tiny. Oh, my God. So the, even our room was like T90. Like, no one was ever allowed upstairs. My mother was like, people can come in announced only no unannounced shit because the place could be turned upside down you know like and then if like the priest would knock on the door my mom would freak out she'd be like hey everybody pick something up like just she would get nervous she didn't want the priest to see what slobs we could be that's amazing when you're irish the priest comes to your house once a week oh my god he eats dinner just knocking looking for money we need a roof i remember the one priest my mom gets mad when i talk about this but he was like we need money for a new roof i'm like i'm sleeping with fucking pots under my arms in my really we need a new roof we don't have any money either but they would they didn't care they would keep coming and yeah. my mom would give them the money <laughs> when i first moved from new york city to jersey i was friends with a lot of different families but there was one italian family i was really tight with i went over there him and I had fought, and after that fight, we became oh, friends. Oh, that's such a kid thing. Yeah. And the other day, I was talking to the older brother, and the older brother doesn't talk to him or the rest of the family no more. And we were just talking about general shit, and he goes, you know what, they don't even do Wednesdays no more. They haven't done pasta Wednesdays at the house in 20 wow. years. And as, I, as he was telling me, they don't do it anymore, I got this coldness in my body, because I was a Cuban kid. I lived with my mom and my stepdad. We very rarely ate dinner together. You know, I wanted to be a Walton kid. I, I <laughs> admired what these people did. Yeah. Like, my mother had money. I had my own air conditioner. I had my own cable box, my own TV in my room, carpeting my own bathroom. Wow. But I would give it all up to have three brothers to jump around at night, like Steve Simone talks about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And all that shit. And he had that. My friend John had that on Wednesdays. And it's amazing. On Wednesdays, you go to his house after school, and there'd be a pot of pasta yeah. in the middle, right? And you scoop it, sure. and then there'd be sauce on the stove with the meat and everything. And I ate so much that the mother would go, you know, I roll those meatballs with my feet. And I would think about it like she <laughs> fucking hated me, the mother. But the father loved me, the sister loved me, the boys loved me, so the mother had to put up with me. But I told him this. I go, I still remember something obvious that 20 feet from the stove, your sister would be cutting hair. 
at the time she used to cut hair at a hair salon. But on Wednesdays, she cut everybody in the neighborhood on a discount. My sister Karen did the so same thing So if it was 20 bucks, yeah, in the kitchen. <laughs> so here you get, you're eating spaghetti oh, with yeah. hair 20 feet away, and not one fucking person would say, hey, there's hair going to be in my food. You just accepted it. When I told him that the other day, he was dying of laughter and crying at the same time. Because of the From the tears of joy. Yeah. How different the mentality was. Right there with Charles Bronson is. We were fucking cooking. <laughs> Cutting hair, she's shot, cutting <laughs> some fucking long person. It was like the TV on, music yeah. was on. With the TV yeah. on, we Donna Summer on, yeah. volume one and two, greatest hits. Wow. That's where I learned to listen to that album. Every time I went over there, they either had Barbra Streisand on or Donna Summer. They were Italians. That's hysterical. That's what I used to clean my house to, Donna Summer. Donna Summer. Live greatest. and More was tremendous, my favorite tremendous. album. It's, it's a lifestyle. When, they told, when he told me the other day on the phone that, the family didn't do that. I got sad in my Aww. heart because that's how I was introduced. I watched it on TV. Now I was I would just sit there in awe and listen to them say things to each other. Nice shirt you wore today, John. Oh, fuck yeah. you, asshole. Destroy hey, shut the other. fuck up. Watch your language in front of mommy. Don't talk. Don't be up an asshole in front of mommy. Don't. Cr- you know, it was this thing that I didn't have in my house. Yeah, we talked at dinner, but not three fucking kids. You know, yeah. it's a, that's a different part of society that. You know, I, I fucking yeah, that was. But I, there. I would envy you as a kid. But yeah, I had the air conditioner, the fucking. Sure. Thing. Yeah, I'm sitting there going. When I came from Cuba, I thought the more hot dogs I ate, the more American I was, right? Please. And now they're telling me I can't eat hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Who's telling you can't eat hot dogs? The fucking the government. They're bad for Are you. Are they basically telling you you're? I gotta Cuban? eat turkey hot dogs <laughs> like this fucking <laughs> galooch over here. Don't fall for I that call shit. Them the other day. I told Just him. Let him go. Well, he told me turkey that he was eating a turkey dogs. hot dog. I told him, throw it away right now. <laughs> the stove you wall. eat that soy shit too? No, I don't even no, stop no, no, it. No. I, I would never get a turkey hot dog. I've been no, trying to eat You're going to turn Asian there. if you do that. Eat too much, your You're eyes will get slammy. You never do that mm-hmm. mistake. You cut on the bun, you get like a gluten free bun. Gluten free. Like put it in a fucking tortilla. Do something different. Yeah, but maybe a tortilla. Never, you never cut back on the hot dog. It's always Nathan or Sad Bread or one of those other There you go. Do they even sell that out here? All I ever Nathan's see is like ballpark. Ralph. Nathan's at Nathan's? Ralph's, bro. Yeah. Okay. Nathan's is at Ralph's. You cut that motherfucker down the middle with some onions. You fry that motherfucker with some yellow mustard. <laughs> Ooh. 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 You need to do a recipe book, like a cookbook. What fucking recipe? <laughs> For like yes. all your random stuff. You do have random dice. Was talking about that. That you talked to his ex-wife. You would always. You guys would just exchange recipes. But really, it was me. you just telling her how I to don't make fuck things. Around, dog. You could, <laughs> Why? You could, you could boil a hot dog and give it to me with a bun. Mm, this and this is a gummy hot dog. Oh, this is delicious. Get the no. fuck out. You take a hot dog. <laughs> you boil that motherfucker for a minute or two. You let those waters start bubbling. <laughs> You take the hot dog out and you throw it in a frying pan right there. Slice it down the middle with some raw onions. And you put some <laughs> mustard right in that motherfucker. In the cook, pan? Right in the pan. Hot mustard? Cook. No. Yellow, yellow mustard. No, no, no. I'm saying but warm mustard Listen in the... Listen to me. Then oh. you throw Why the cold mustard it? back on. You throw the cold mustard back on. Okay, okay. And it neutralizes everything. Bro. You didn't finish it. You didn't hear me out. I'm sorry. That's what I'm talking How are you going to fucking... Pick that new hairdo and not listen to the fucking hot dog recipe. <laughs> here. And you take the, like I was thinking about it, like I, I'm looking for a business. Like I like to own like a food business, but something simple. So why don't you something simple? You know so me and my wife want to move to like Louisville and open up something like authentic, <laughs> like fucking. So today I thought of a new hot dog, a fucking hot dog with a slice of American cheese, raw onions. And baked beans, like those bush beans. Like in it. Yeah. God damn! damn. <laughs> God damn! After three bong hits of misery. <laughs> how How is an, a Native American woman slash Irish and a Cuban guy going to open up a, an authentic hot dog place? The same way I see fucking Hindus spinning around pizzas in the air. You ever go to ma- uh, Mama's, Grandmama's Pizza? <laughs> Big Mama's. I used Big to work mama. for them. Big fu- mama. Everybody in there has that armpit smell. Oh, it's disgusting. They have. An, uh, when you go to the one on Sunset... I know by, the one, uh, the by, one Martel, by Martel, Roma, by Ralph. Right to yeah, Martel, yeah. go in there. At the door, it smells like that pun, oh. like, like ISIS armpit. Like with somebody from ISIS, <laughs> with their armpit would smell like that. In that desert for 10 weeks, chopping off motherfuckers' yeah. heads. For everyone listening, well, he's talking about the pizza place that delivered to the Oscars this year. Oh, yes. It <laughs> does smell in there. Well, though. let me it tell you something weird. about that pizza, my friend. Have you ever seen how they make pizza by the slice? Yes, I it's worked there. It's a pre-cut Ugh. piece of dough. Dough. 
Yeah. Don't tell Are me my serious? pizza. Yes. And they sprinkle it on it. But yes. So that's what the Oscars eat? Welcome to my world. The rest of the world. That's why I don't eat pizza out here with these fucking Gentiles. I agree. You go on Mama's Pizza, they give you a clab of pizza, and you can see them make the slice. You don't do that. You make the pizza as a whole. You let it caligulate. Then you <laughs> chop the motherfucker up. I'm not even Italian. I fucking know that shit. The fuck is wrong with people? I don't know. The Oscars. That's why those mutts are all gonna die of gluten free and fucking uh, plastic surgery. You know, they, <laughs> that's what the, they, they don't eat fucking apples. But meanwhile, they yeah. got needles and fucking lasers in their eyeballs and shit. To Put look it younger. in Botox. Fuck Ugh. you, cocksucker. What's up, Lisa? Yeah, you oh, I bad motherfucker. It. I love Isis armpit. That, it smells like that. When you, like, yeah, when you go in there, you're like, oh, I'm sorry to know oh you guys are shooting God. the video. When fuck. you walk into awesome. Mama's. Mama's Papa on Sunset. I'm not trying to be it funny. It is awful. He's right. As soon as you close the door, you smell armpit. You smell heavy duty. I'm not going to say what nationality. <laughs> I don't. Because I don't want people saying you're being fucking racist or whatever. It just has that pungent desert odor to it. <laughs> but I can't tolerate. I can't tolerate that shit. Desert. <coughs> so desert that's why I don't go on Mama's and Papa. Somebody told me that pizza was good. And I went in there one time and I ordered one slice just as a sample, just to see. When I saw them put out the prefabricated slices. That's crazy. I can't do it, guys. Now, I got nervous this weekend because you asked me for pizza place. Did you try it? Was it okay? Where'd it wasn't go? bad. There's a place on Laurel Canyon, Stone, Cold, Stone. Let me tell you something. It's uh, Danielle's Woodfire. It wasn't bad. Oh, my, I know that my place. My wife I've had the there. pepperoni. It wasn't yeah. bad. I had the extra cheese. Not bad. But I had the salad. The cream Italian dressing on the salad, fucking delicious. Oh, that's good. And I ate that like at 10 o'clock at night. I had nothing else in it. I okay. just ate the salad with the Do you tomato. ever go to Vito's or Joe's? Vito's, on is, on, Vito's is on La Cienega. Yeah. Next to the Chinese place. Yeah. I'll give you a dollar if you can find a parking spot. That used to be my Chinese place. <laughs> oh, I, my God. I used to go to Vito's. Rice, too, rice yeah. is the shit. Rice. <laughs> rice. Sh- and I'm going to tell you why rice is the why? shit. Why? Not because of the Chinese soup. Or the twice cooked pork or anything else. The chicken wings. <laughs> oh, to die for. Do they have the sauce or the, like the plain ones from Listen, like sauces East Coast? Sauces Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a fried chicken wing with pieces of garlic and God, green onion. I haven't onion had that in years. And they give you four wings per order. And you dip it in the hot mustard. You sound like you may have an orgasm no, right no, no, now. No, 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 no. This, right? this is something from another fucking All dimension. Right. Nobody was doing this. So then Vito's open. They have the pizza place next door. It's not bad. But this fucking rice, the wings at rice. I've been eating that rice since 1990 motherfucking seven. And they changed it's owners. Dark. Now it's like a sushi place or something, right? Yeah. We, they it, did it, something. It, I don't like you. can't changed. mix flags yeah. with me. Pick a no. country. I don't like you. You're going to Japanese. You're selling Thai. Yeah. Why confuse? If you put peanut in my twice cooked pork, I will stab every fucking Chinaman in this fucking restaurant. <laughs> I thought of you again at Oddball. They had like stands for food. Yeah. And one of them was Chinese food. And someone next to me got it. And I turned to Paula. I didn't look at it behind me. I said, did someone just fart? And she pointed over. It had the most disgusting egg oh. roll and, um, and rib. I don't eat like, it. They had one of those, but it would look like fake. It looked like a 7-Eleven if they were going to do a Chinese rib. That's my favorite restaurant. Uh, I love 7-Eleven. Do you? shit on that, yeah. The Italian sandwich <laughs> at 7-Eleven. Have you had that motherfucker no, at 12 o'clock at night? but I am always in 7-Eleven. Listen to me. Listen to what you it's do. It's called the Italian sandwich. Listen to me. You go into 7-Eleven in the back. I turn fuck go on to it. He did this to me at like 1 in the morning. Everyone breaks my everyone balls. Time. I'm always in 7-Eleven. Listen to me. You go, forget the chicken salad on wheat. Okay. That shit will kill you. You'll be shit yeah. the next day. I got go sick off one You go thing. to 7-Eleven and you get the Italian sub. Take it home. Throw the lettuce out. Throw the peppuccini out. Because it's, Take yeah. the cold cuts out. Toast the bread with the cold cuts. Take it out. Put lettuce, tomatoes, pepperoncinis, and vinegar and all, and call me back tomorrow. <laughs> and tell me who the fuck you think you're dealing with. Here. You just gotta dope it up. That's it. You just gotta dope it up. It's I didn't there. realize you gotta it's dope there. it up. The yeah, it's like taking real. a girl out of a project. It's delicious, but yeah. it's there. You just gotta dope it up. You gotta put some effort into it. You just can't. Don't. If you take it home with you, you gotta call me and go, Joey. You disrespected me. No. You gotta do you what I'm telling you. Disrespect. Take it home. Take the guts out. All that Arabian lettuce and all that <laughs> shit. And the, fucking, brown the brown Why lettuce. The brown lettuce. Yeah, because it's been here for fucking <laughs> since Tuesday. Then you take the bread, you toast it in one of those broil ovens, 
Then you hit it with lettuce and vinegar. You cut it so the bread is crunchy. Yeah. That yeah, but who has time? If you're going to 7-Eleven getting a sub, you don't have time for that. Yes, you do. Because you don't have to always act like a fucking savage all your fucking life. you got to be civilized every once in a every while. Every once in a while, you have to They also the have a on. tub of New York Super Fudge Chunk. See, it's a whole complete situation. Oh. A lot of people don't plan this shit. If you're going to go to Denny's, and if you're going to go to fucking 7-Eleven and support ISIS... Oh, hit them shit. big. That's who you're supporting. Is that, they're is that what fucking, you're telling me? They're definitely a terrorist group. Look <laughs> at them. The one by my house keeps changing the color of his goatee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I got 7 Eleven cards. You don't change the Money color cards. of your goatee if you fucking aren't in the paper, <laughs> if somebody's not looking for you. <laughs> Why would you change the, this from white? You know which one I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. He was out there the other night with the hose. He always changes the They're always his face. out there with the hose. They're always out they're there with the hose. They're going to get fined out They're washing the, the gunpowder. Off the fucking front of the and place. And they had to scare that homeless guy where he was rapping to himself. The white homeless guy. Oh, bro. How, yeah, scared. Like the, how scared was that one dude that came across in the street? Wasn't it you and me or Steve Simone? Might have been Simone. Simone, yeah. And I thought, 7-Eleven is where the action's at. It really is. <coughs> it's like a nightclub. I love it. I love it. You I, can't, some of them, you can't even get parking. Yeah. You got to park across the street because they got handicap and they got this. That's... It's my That's favorite. How you feeling? You ready for this? I'm pretty high. Kill this last piece. No, good night. I'd have to. For come your on. country. For your country. I'll, no, no, Look no, how no. tiny I threw up the last time I Look, I'm going to go like on, this. You uh. threw up the last yeah. time? Well, he blames on sushi. Look at that. Look at that. I, I would blame it on come sushi. On. One more piece here. One more for the government. Come on. Okay. Wow, you for really. How was uh, peer pressure for you? I know. Did that work out? He does this He does when we do live podcasts. He does it on stage. So. That's my board, though. But it seems like you have fun doing it. No, yeah. but, uh, well, most of it's fun. If His eyes are closed, but he's yeah. enjoying go himself. Home watch ESPN for three days. This is I do that anyway. Right yeah, I know. But Take actually, before, uh, before before I take a bite, I want to talk to you. It was before we I take a bite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a business. So you yeah. don't forget. No, because because I, I have something to, t- to talk about. But I picked up my girlfriend. She lives in Inglewood. She's okay. Mexican. And we wow. dropped we dropped the mom off at a at a Mexican Independence Day party right right across the street. And she called, like, right when we got home, like an hour later, five dudes in the alley that runs behind their house, drive by, all got shot and killed. Oh, no. And it was like, she was yelling, on the phone, she was yelling at the cops saying it was their fault because they don't come in the, in the neighborhood. And it was just, I couldn't, and the mom was scared and, the, and Paula was kind of scared, but I couldn't imagine having to live with that. And it happens all the time. All the time. And like... When I like, when you were doing, you never did stuff like that. But when you were like selling drugs, did you ever like worry about that stuff or Every getting day. shot? You know, yeah. Yeah. I can't even imagine. There's some fucking retard out there. You, you see what's going yeah. on now on the fucking roads? People pull up to you and shoot you. What about last week? Some guy was just shooting people at random. All that over. That happens all the time. Church. That happened on Highland at and church. Sunset. Yeah, like three this times. is this is crazy, guys. So every still look at this poor guy. He's choking to death. Look at him. Swallow the fucking thing, will you please? Hell yeah. You think when a hooker's out there Be sucking ca- dick and that don't sperm comes up. through the fucking condom, it tastes like rubber <laughs> fucking milk? You think that she's making faces? How long is it going to take you to drink this? Look at him. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what am I watching What am I here? dealing with here? This Swallow like a, a bad fucking thing porn. Is this what, what happened? Jewish porn is? What? It was a big beast. <laughs> it was a small, tiny piece. Now you're back. Look at you. What do you want to go eat at? How many calories you got left? Not Can he like get I got 155. Are you a Weight Watchers? I'm on everything. I'm on my Look. fucking fit diet, whatever. What's that? The Eagles won. What was the score? 30-27. Oh, what? shit. Everybody that. picked they the beat Super uh, Colts. The Colts. The Colts were, were beating them for a while. Yeah, they were beating them 20-6. to six. Monday night, you never pick a bookie. We never no. see a bookie with a part-time job on a Monday night. No. If I tell you once, I tell you a thousand times, don't fuck with Monday nights. <laughs> but, yeah, like, do you, like, could, like there's, there's drug dealers who hang up by her house, and I always see them. Like, not even, like, dealing with gangs, because that's who did it, apparently, was a gang. But, like, when you were going to pick, just pick up some coke and and anywhere like and that's where it happened i couldn't imagine having to deal with that you never know when you walk into a coke house that the cops are going to kick the door down yeah uh, i don't know when i saw you the other night the main reason why i put you on the show is because this is we, something we talk about all the time and it's work and and come in when i met you you were the head waitress at the comedy store now you just taped a special for showtime six yeah. seven eight years fucking later Seven and a half. And I got to take my heart out to you. I mean, it's a great accomplishment. You know, I've always loved you and broke your balls. <laughs> and we've had a lot of good laughs. But that's something that, you know, and your friends with Dice, he loves you to death. I mean, you're his goomba. You keep him fucking solid. When everybody, when he's going off, 
Oh. You're the only one that could say, shut the fuck up, bitch. Is he still married? <laughs> yeah, He's yeah, still married yeah. to the Mexican chick? He's still married to the... She's wow. Mexican, Italian, and Jewish. I'm fucking believe. Yeah, and he goes, you know, Joe, every once in a while, he'll say, Joe Diaz is right. These Latin girls, man. These fucking Latin <laughs> girls. They're fucking nuts, man. Well, you want to know, even crazier now, I date her uncle. <laughs> so you keep it all in the family. Yeah, he's Italian and Jewish. And how's Max doing? Max is doing great. The band uh, is still together The and band everything. is together. They're playing somewhere. The Other Door is the name of a place they're playing. It's either on the 24th. September 24th or October 2nd. Now, what's Max's brother? Dylan. Dylan. Yeah. They're called L.A. Rocks. If it's you ever amazing. get a chance, look up their music. It's phenomenal. How long have I known since they were Gosh. kids? Gosh. Yeah, they just... Dylan will be 20 next week, and Max is 24. Crazy, right? I know Max when he was around 10. I met Dylan when he, he the mother was pregnant with him. <laughs> oh, my was, God. <laughs> how creepy is that? It's amazing yeah, I've, known, that I've known Andrew 21 years. You know, I stopped going. And I've been going down there for 17. And I know, I know Andrew since he was his cousin used to go down there at night. Jamie. And the fucking cousin every night. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Uh, every night I come home the next morning. You know, I talk to Terry every night when I get home. You know, if it's for 10 minutes. Some nights I make a get up. Yeah. And go get coffee with me outside. I can't fucking believe you're waiting there. <laughs> I love that. But, uh, you know. <laughs> I tell her how much the story's changed. It's a different you know? beast now, right? And uh, what it is and what it's done to me the last three weeks. It's just made me a different, you know? And people didn't understand. Like, I made this comment one night, and I felt shitty after I made it. And it was in front of, like, two younger comics. And I said, they said, well, we heard you back at the store. And I said, you know, you can only get so good following people at the ha-ha and at flappers. You can only get so good. If you want to be a killer, you got to hang out with fucking killers. And that's the fucking store. Yep. It makes your heart beat, you know. That's what I want to be pushed. You know, it's amazing when you work out by yourself and when you work out with a trainer. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing when you yeah. go home and go, Oh, Every wow! muscle hurts. Everything yep. hurts because you push yourself because yeah. somebody pushes you. You know, I would go to the high at night fresh off like, I'm going to take a shit and go down to the high. Yeah. I would look at a notebook. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Flap is the same it's thing. It's true. When I go to the comedy store, you better look at your notebook before you go down there. Oh, yeah. You better make a couple notes. You better, you know, you oh, have yeah. to. It's, it's, and for me, it was everything. Yeah, me you too. Know, nobody I understands that I walked away from everything because there was reasons. I disrespected the plays. Marilyn, it wasn't Tommy. It had nothing to do with Tommy. For right. Me. It was just everything that was going on. It was, it was time to close the door. Yeah. You have to know when to fucking close the door. You have to know when to fold them. Yeah. And that's what happened. And after the Marilyn thing, I said, I definitely got to stop going down there. You mean when with I went the off fight? On Jeff yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I said, yeah. I got to stop going down there. It was well needed. But yes, it was well needed. And uh, I felt good, you know. I, and it's funny how it came to me. You ever watch the movie Being There? Yeah. With Peter Sellers? Yeah. I had to do a colonoscopy. And that okay. week, they called me. Tommy got fired like on a Wednesday. Like I don't. That. I was on the East Coast. Something yeah, happened. He yeah. got fired, and somebody called and said, "You're gonna go back to the store." And I said, "Absolutely not." And I was getting a colonoscopy, and the reason why I got the colonoscopy is because of Marilyn Martinez. Yeah. That's the cancer she had. Yeah. So when I went home and told my wife that they offered me a colonoscopy, she goes, "You know, that's the cancer that Marilyn. Colon cancer. If Marilyn yeah. would have done that, she wouldn't have died." Marilyn also used to bust my balls about being there. She used to always go, "You've never seen Peter Sellers in that fucking movie," and I'm like, "No." Why would I watch them if he's not Inspector Cluzo? Yeah. And she's like, watch the fucking movie. So it was on IFC one night, and I taped it with commercials. <laughs> so this night... I, I, think I watched it. Yeah. Because right? yeah. I was like, oh, my God, being there. Though. This is three months ago, and I taped it and didn't watch it. And I get up one night, you have to drink the potion at 5 in the afternoon to make you shit. So I can put the camera for up the, the colonoscopy. Ass, well, for oh, colonoscopy. oh, I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> and then happening? you gotta get up at right. two in the morning. I don't see makes you watch it and drink another Kool Aid. Yeah, and that makes you shit even more. That goes deep into the bowels and oh, takes wow. blood out. Oh wow, yeah, it's probably aloe uh, vera oh, water or some shit. It's fucking yeah. that sandpaper. My boyfriend does that. He thinks and he's the next thing, his no, no, this is the shit that the hospital gives you with a prescription. Yeah, just this is horrible. Ugh. So I got up and they tell you don't go back to sleep because it's a waste of your time. Just sit. So I smoked a joint and I watched this movie. And it's basically about God. You know, yeah. It's, it's a mission of God. And when he walks away at the end, that's when I, like, I, I cry a little bit. Like, it really hit me. Aww. 
And I said, this is Marilyn telling me to go back to the store, cut the shit. And I remember the next morning when I got back from the call. And I told you on the drive down. Yeah. That I decided I'm calling it for spots at the store. That's it. Amazing. And it was just like a sign. It was that yeah. time. Isn't it kind of crazy that... Like, Ari tweeted today that it, this was the day he got passed or whatever. It's, like, still his biggest accomplishment as he's filming a TV show. And, like, I was just thinking it's kind of cool that, like, sometimes you've talked to comics about getting into different comedy clubs. You left the store for seven years and you can just call them and, like, tell them you want to do spots and, like, they'll just let you up, like, because you, you got passed. And, Joe like, Diaz. You're, like, a member of it. So, like, that must have been pretty cool, even though you left for seven years. Well, he's still Joe Diaz. He's still, like, a relevant, great comic. He's a so. member, you know. It kills me that uh, there was a lot of names on the wall. Yeah. Because there's a lot of names of people who came through town. They don't even do comedy anymore. Exactly. But there's names of people there who really worked, who really worked hard, and then they just zeroed in on the comedy store. I was one of those people. I knew when I came to town, the first place I was going to was the comedy store. I didn't know about the Laugh Factory. No. I don't know about Bud Friedman, his fucking improv, or... <laughs> Or Enz Mitchell and the fucking Ew, and that cl- no he wasn't even, he wasn't up. even around at that time. Ugh. In fact, I worked with him in promotions upstairs. Me, Larry Vizio, when I got past Larry Vazio, I was yeah. one of the telemarketers upstairs. No, you weren't. Yes, I don't I remember was. that. That was yeah hysterical. for about three weeks or four weeks. But it's amazing that the comedy store meant that to me. Like when I came to this town, I went to Acapulco to eat dinner, and I went to the comedy store and I seen James Stevens the third. Please. I saw Lenny Eddie Griffin, and I saw somebody else down there that night, Wheels. Okay. And they got me on stage before Don Barris, and that was like, I could have died that night. Even if there was eight people in the crowd, didn't matter. Yeah. I got on it stage at the, the, comedy idea store. Of the comedy store. Didn't yeah. matter. No matter whether it was an open mic, nobody needs to know that. It was on my resume now, bitch. I went home that <laughs> night. I put comedy store on that motherfucker. <laughs> Sunset Strip, L.A., motherfucker. <laughs> That the was O-R. huge. The OR, that's huge. That's yeah. And then for her to give tell you to come back after five minutes. And then for her to tell you that, that you're a regular, call Scott tomorrow for spots. Did you, did you showcase once? Twice. Like wow. Okay. One Sunday, three minutes, you made me come back and do ten. Okay. That was it. Call Feb- Scott. I got here January 29th. I was past February 19th. Wow. Three weeks in. Doug Stanhope referred me. Uh, yeah, that's your comic that Wheels referred you? Okay. And Carlos Mencia. Oh, okay. And they yeah. they were kind of her favorites. Those were her at favorites. At least at that moment. She changed favorites a lot. <laughs> I was just telling somebody the story. Like, I worked, for, I was her personal assistant for like six years. <laughs> the worst thing. But she got me my first stamp in my passport. So we went to the Dominican Republic. To get stem cells. <laughs> you know how fucking frightening that was? <laughs> that I had Mitzi Shore, who every comic is waiting for her approval, and she's in the fucking Dominican Republic getting stem cell injections. When you first started comedy, did you do it at the store? Because, like, I, could, I, yeah, I worked at a place for too long sometimes, and, like, they always see you. They always saw me as, like, the intern. Yeah. So, like, did you th- was, it weird, was it weird going there? Once I started doing stand-up, yeah. Like, yeah. even getting validation from Joe, Dom, Irera, Joe Rogan, any of these guys. Because you guys, I was idolizing you guys. You know, not that I wanted to be a stand-up. I had no interest in being a stand-up. But just waiting tables and laughing my ass off at you guys. And I'm like, when I started, I remember going to Mitzi's and I was like, hey, I'm going to start doing this one-woman show. Can I work it in the belly room? And she was like, yeah. Because I would never go on the original room stage unless that's for real comics i'm gonna be an asshole in the belly room for a little bit you know and so she she was like yeah do it and then dice came one night with his girlfriend at the time and watched and he was like you're doing stand-up i'm like no this isn't stand-up this is this is a one-woman show because i'm talking about my family he's like no and then he took me on the road with him and i was it i was like oh shit i haven't done the one-woman show yet but (laughs) <laughs> I have, like, gone on with him and just, like, filming this special is, like, a giant thing. It's only ten minutes, I think, but I don't care because it's Dice giving me the validation of you're a stand-up comic. That's hard. Dom watched me the other night in the <coughs> main room and said, y- 
you know. No, Dom had you on the show last oh, week with me. A million times, yeah. yeah but I'm saying. He had you with me. Yeah, I, he, he sits and watches now, and he goes, you know, because I've worked with him in Philly. I've worked with him in La Jolla. I've, you know, all over. But it, it just, you know, that validation, like him saying really funny stuff, like, and picking out bits and going, this is terrific, this bit, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? So I know I'm doing it or going in the right direction because you Feels guys. Feels good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's amazing. And to go on that OR stage, I would never until I was ready. I was terrified to do it. So I didn't go on for a long time there. But now it's my favorite. You know, he, he, I get pissed if I don't have OR spots. People have no idea that my first... Okay, so I got out of prison in February. And the guy that was my roommate that I spoke to the other day uh, said that you got to watch this comedian. And he kept giving me this VA set. I'm like, where am I going to watch it? I'm in the fucking halfway house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where am I going to? I think it took him like September. And it was Andrew Dice Clay live from Philly. Oh, yeah. And I was blown away. And that New Year's, we weren't allowed to go out in the halfway house. So I put that tape in. I got a bunch of guys. They said, I okayed it. And we had a party. No beers, no drugs, just soda and popcorn. And we died of laughter at Andrew Dice Clay. That's amazing. And I think I got on stage maybe two years later. And to go to the store and see him walking around. Oh, yeah. Because he would just it's, be It's mind boggling. Yeah. <laughs> it's mind boggling for a guy. And I would never say a word to him. Never. Never. Nothing. <laughs> Until one night there was a situation with uh, uh, Marino and Luca. And he was furious. They, he said they were stealing his essence. And Scott Day and him were arguing. And I tried to explain to Andrew that when you start doing comedy, you always do somebody else until you get your persona. I go, Jesus, when I started doing comedy, I was you till my voice came right. out. And he goes, I never thought about it that way. And he was very <laughs> angry, but he called the house three days later. Can you imagine when you go home, you check your messages, and there's a message from Andrew Dice Clay, <laughs> what happens here? And then he took me on the road with him to Vegas yeah. with me, Bobby Lee, and Jim Norton. Before Jim Norton. Yeah, it was, uh, I yeah, forgot. Yeah, the Bad Boys of yeah, yeah. Comedy Tour. This is craziness. And, and, and it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, that just gives you something. Like, if you die right there, you're good. Yeah. Like, as you're going through heaven, you're like, you know what, whatever. I became a regular at the store, and I went on the road with Andrew Dice Clay. What did you do with your life? <laughs> you know? Like, that's how, to me, it meant that. It was a stripe. Like, mm. it always has been. I'll never forget Andrew for the shot of confidence he gave me. And everything he, the first time, the first two or three movies I booked was with Andrew's advice. Every time I use Andrew's advice for how he booked Crime Story, mm -hmm. I do it. I become Andrew in a yeah. fucking room. He says, that can't, let them roll that fucking camera. Roll that motherfucking <laughs> camera, Jack, and watch this. And he would do stuff backwards. <laughs> <laughs> That's the like genius. Like he would do the story backwards? Everything. Like he would, whatever you do, I want you to do it backwards. You know, in an audition. Like he, you know, it's just amazing the knowledge that man has. Yeah. The knowledge Andrew Dice Clay has, he could change your comedy stylings with five sentences. Like, do this, hold your hand this way. Then he'll always throw something in like Mitzi that's outlandish. Uh, yeah, it is sometimes, yeah, yeah. You should wear a hat with a <laughs> snake on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, You're like, no, I, like I don't Mitzi, like snakes. Mitzi, when, when Mitzi know. would see you on Sundays, <laughs> she'd always give you, that was a great joke. You're mm -hmm. looking thinner. I have an idea. And right there, your whole body cringe. You're like, oh. Next week, I want you to dress like Fidel Castro <laughs> and put a handcuff on and go on stage. I think it would be funny. She mm. told me that 18 times. Are time. you kidding? But she would, like, this was Mitzi. If Mitzi told you something on Sunday, she was going to forget it by Monday. Hopefully. But if the talent coordinator called you on Wednesday and re-mentioned it, You're that's not trouble. good. Yeah. That's, so like, she, what would she say? Like, if she saw you Sunday and would go, Lee, come in, Lee. Lee, I want you to wear a rabbi suit <laughs> and put your asshole on fire up on stage at the end to close. <laughs> You're like, that's funny, Mitzi. That's a great idea. And you leave. And hopefully she'll forget it. Hopefully people will talk to her and that's out of her memory. But if the talent coordinator calls you on Wednesday and goes, hi, Lee. I got a message from Mitzi Shore. She <laughs> gave you a spot at 1030 in the main room. She wants don't you to wear the rabbi, rabbi suit. suit. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're fucking done if you don't wear that rabbi suit. 
Yeah, and if she caught you without it, yeah, you're done. you were fired immediately. She fired. did that. I fired. saw her do that to a number, a handful she of people. She told comics. Carnelli to put the guitar back or something. He didn't do oh, it. Oh, no. She fired him immediately. Yeah. She fucking, she, he got, she told him one night, bring the guitar back. So when he got off stage, he kept saying, fuck up. I'm not, I don't need no guitar. I'm funny as it is. So she told him again, if you don't do the guitar, you're not going to get spots no more. So he's out there when they yelling at the building one night, fuck the comedy store. I don't need the comedy store. I'll go to the Ice House and develop, and I'll come back here, and I'll blow all these comics out of the water. <laughs> About two months later, I see him at the union. When they did to do the union. No. What was next to the fucking union? What was the place where Dane Cook got made? On oh. Sunset. Uh, upstairs. The, uh, wait, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. D- yeah. Dublin. Dublin. Upstairs. Dublin. Dublin had an upstairs. Yeah. That way they did comedy, but yeah, they used to do Jay parties there. And them, yeah. There was a room up there one night. We were all up there on a Wednesday night. We did, we did some comedy up there. Ahmed and Jay. Ahmed and Jay. Yeah. And we all, this was way before it became that. It was this killer. is when they did it once a month. This is the summer of 98. Summer of 99. Danny Kelly was the talent coordinator. Ew, I forgot he store. was in there for a minute. 98. Throwing yeah, 98. Heat. Throwing heat. Throwing heat. <laughs> throwing heat. And I, John Carnelli's there, and he's like, yeah, I'm thinking of going back. That's when the war started between him and I. Because he says, I'm thinking I'm going back to the store now. And I go, what happened to Mr. I'm not ever playing the guitar again? Yeah. I go, I thought you were going to develop somewhere else, Mr. I'm not going to play the guitar. I go, now you're begging for a spot. I, go, I guarantee you show up with a 12-man band. <laughs> he fucking was pissed. So and you guys he, have a thing? Not anymore. He's disappeared. Who knows where he the fuck I, is. I've now. worked with him like two months John ago. John Carnell. Yeah. Which one are you talking in, about? Uh, in Vegas at the Laugh Factory. The, I the, did a guest spot. The, the weird one. The one I used to hang out with, with Johnny Sanchez. Sanchez. Johnny Sanchez. Okay. Yeah. So I see him about a week later, and he has a little bit of attitude towards me. Uh. And he goes to me, oh, you getting ready to go on stage? Shouldn't you be doing a line of coke? <gasps> Isn't that what makes no you fun? No way. And I go, bitch, listen, I don't need no fucking guitar. I don't need no line of coke. And he kept talking. He was a Johnny Sanchez. And I had a Heineken bottle. Or gla- oh, I had a glass. They hate each other now. Like. Nah, yeah, yeah, they all do. Everybody hates Johnny Carnelli. I take the fucking glass and I whip it out of his head from like where the lineup is. And the OR, he was by like midway, he ducked. But they got the fuck out of there. Like that was it. Once somebody throws a glass yeah. in the comedy store, like I, I'm crazy, dog. Once you throw a glass at somebody? Fuck yeah. Fuck Good, me. yeah. So the next night I'm driving by Martell and I see him. And I'm parked, and I'm, I'm in traffic by, what's the bar that closed down on, across from 7-Eleven, where, re, where Terry used to hang out, everybody used to go there at oh, night. Oh, yeah. Coaching, coaching horses. Coaching horses, it's now something I weird. I saw English. Sanchez walking out of there, and I beep at him. He goes, pull over. He goes, last night, that had nothing to do with me. It was all John <laughs> Cardinelli. Because I threw a fucking glass. You know me, I don't know. I love Johnny Sanchez, throws oh, him right under the bus. Says, oh, good, yeah, let that out. Whatever That's you need. Dog, I had yeah. that part, it was at a taco. Smells little like a Tony Bennett here for you motherfuckers. It's Monday, September 15th. Get out there, cocksuckers. What? How you feeling, Lee? I'm really high. When somebody <laughs> breaks your heart. I would have been high before that. Who, took, who takes care of you like Uncle Joey? Play the music, oh, you yeah. fucker. Yeah. It's why it says... Can we take a texting break? Come on, let's go. Come on, music, music. <laughs> texting nobody. My buddy called me with the fuck. I mean, <laughs> all right. What what happened, cocksucker? What's the gig on about here? Everybody's gig on. Well, I love it. Tony Bennett. I'm just that's very amazing. proud of you, doggy. You Thank you. And we're you know we're doing um, an Australian tour for the first time. Who is? Me and Dice. Come on. October 1st through the 29th, and uh, we'll be all over Australia. A bunch of I think it's like 18 shows, 17 shows, something like that. And then 29 one, days. Yeah, and one show in uh, New Zealand. You'll have a good time, man. I can't wait. Neither one of us have ever been. And who else is going? Just you two? 
Uh, his wife, uh, Happy Face, was like a road manager slash right, bodyguard. And yeah. then uh, he has a karate school in Jersey. Yes, yes. Happy is the band. Uh, and then who? <coughs> uh, one other guy might go. I don't know, like a manager or something, uh, something like that. His manager Bruce, I think. I think he's going. I don't know. Every day it changes. So we'll see. And you still get on stage every night. Every night I get on stage. Um, where even if it's like a stinky one, I still do that. I don't care. Like bar, like some guy came up to me at the improv last night. He's like, "Hey, you ever do a bar show?" I'm like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> I mean, I don't care about not getting paid because you don't make your you make your money on the road, right, you know. Right. But to come up with new stuff, you got to do those shows and it, to still feel like alive, you got to do those shows. I mean, and i Adam's great to me at the comedy store, so I get like late night or like a killer opening. Like I open the main room. And then I did like an 11.45, so it's kind of like you get the best of both worlds. And I did a 1.45 the other night in the belly room after the Long Beach and opening the main room. I love that, bouncing around, trying to get three, four shows in a night. You can get you can get three. Four is tough. I I've did done nine four. sets last week. Three I could do. Three I in could an, do. It's just driving three in a in night. night. Yeah, I could do three in a night. Yeah, it's just the driving part. Four is fucking tough. Four but you could do tough. it. Like, if you have the Laugh Factory on a Monday and the Comedy Store open mic, you got those two covered. So now you got to pop two more so you can catch the the Ha Ha. Mm -hmm. the ha -ha. I haven't been there in a while. You catch the Ha Ha contest tonight and you catch Flappers. There's oh, Flappers. Yeah, there's on. always a something open mic there. I forgot flappers. about that. So you go to Laugh Factory, then jump up here and do those two, and then go to Comedy Store's open until two. What about the yeah. improv? Could you, could you do the improv too? Could you well, do black all like five or six? Improv. So yeah, well, he's just taking Monday. Triple, I used to yeah, do triple do. crowns on Monday. Mm -hmm. I got like three triple crowns. It used to be freaky Monday, so white people would go up from 8 o'clock to 8.40. When do you go up? Oh, you're white? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is when they did that. They, okay. don't, they don't do it no more. They don't do it no more. They that do, freaky Monday. I feel like I remember yeah, that yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was David Tell and Pablo Francisco and Doug Stanhope. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Chris, uh, the guy from Friday. It was a great show on Monday nights. Yeah. Now it's hosted by... Somebody else, great kid from Chicago, Hold that on. does all with the, the movies yeah. with the blue eyes, Mike, whatever. But they only put three comics on, and they're yeah. all black. Yeah, yeah. You know, unless you oh, want to submit yourself to that fucking torture on a Monday night, it's bad. I do do everybody's, a lot of black shows. Yeah, everybody's on the phone. Yeah. You know what? With the black phones, with the black for black phones, <laughs> with the black rooms, I always tell people be last a minute. Have you ever done um, the Sam Manuel? On a Wednesday for the Laugh Factory, no. I just did that last week. No. My boyfriend was screaming, laughing. I saw him pacing in the back because he saw me sweating. What is it? Is it just? Bad? It's mixed. It's it it's is a two mixed. hour drive. It's right? predominantly black, but it is mixed. But it's like real, the worst of every mix. Does that make sense? Like the worst. They're of the yelling out. Yeah. The they're worst. yelling out. They would yell at me, Gabriel, get off the stage. Yeah, they make dice shows look yeah, peachy. Yeah, no, no, no. I won't go down there. I was sweating, I and I had to do 30 to minutes. Tortured, bro. Hey, for 30 I'm minutes, I'll do the drive, I'm not, man. I'm not doing that no more. I did enough of those. <laughs> well, see, you're, yeah, yeah I paid you're, my dues. I, I didn't, can't. I'm still paying. I fucking, I used to drive to Chino for 40 bucks <laughs> on Sunday nights. This is good money, though, because it's me a laugh factory. Josh Wolf, yeah. Oh, Josh Please, man. I used to drive to fucking San Bernardino. For fucking shit money and all these yeah. gigs, I developed in the Latino rooms. I was very lucky because there was thirty Mexican rooms. Yeah. I'm very fortunate because I always got eleven forty five at the spot. That spot's always gonna be there. So now I yeah. got a choice. I can sit at home and do nothing, or go make eighty bucks for some blow. I would hit. Wow. I would hit Casa Latina and pick up forty, and hit Felipe's room and pick up forty. There you and go. You go to the store. Chewy be right there. Pick up a fifty. Boom. <laughs> You got thirty left over for gas. Poor Chewy. Yeah, you know. Does it I give you anxiety? What? Does it give you anxiety? Because like I've gone out of, like a, a few times in the last few weeks with you, and like you'll say I got ten fifty, you'll get there ten forty five, and they're thirty minutes behind. Yeah. Like it would give me anxiety knowing actually I was supposed to be at the store. Yeah. And and you didn't even have a cell phone, so you could probably couldn't call and be like, hey, are, am I, is it cool if I'm late? Like, does that happen a lot where you yeah, like, miss yeah, spots? At the store, I always know they're going to be late. Behind. Or I'm going to walk cool. in, yeah. and they're going to go, thank God you came. We have no comics. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So I love when that happens. You always have a 20-minute window at the store. Okay. So that, as long as they, you know, when I was coming up, you always had dice, 
Mooney or Eddie Griffin on stage. Where they were bumping Three people. nights a week. Yeah. So you always knew that. So if you called at nine and they said Eddie Griffin's here, I'm just going to take my time with Felipe. Don't Smokes even bother. Go. Yeah. Don't even bother till about one. You just know. You just know how to time them. So, yeah. so like, what would happen? Let's say you had a spot, didn't call in, and just missed it. Like, do you get? Do you not get brought back? Like, I, I the get comedy that. store. If you have a spot and nah. you miss it, nothing. Nothing. Really? Just yeah. call. I call the next day and apologize. You fell asleep. You know. Whatever it is. You were yeah. tired. You got caught in traffic. Whatever. You know. You just. There's a lot of clubs that won't fucking tolerate it. The Laugh Factory won't tolerate it. Yeah, I've had to cancel at the store, like for like if filming runs too long or something. You know, and that's. That's they acceptable. don't get pissed. No, yeah, they don't get pissed. They don't get pissed. And the Laugh Factory, I guess I haven't canceled on them yet. <laughs> I go. If they bump me, I leave. And then they get pissed off at me. They won't give me a spot for a month. Really? I've already been bumped a thousand times. I'm not doing it. And every time I go to the Laugh Factory, Dane Cook goes to bump me because they put me on last. So oh, he doesn't want to go on last. So he bumps me. I leave. I don't give a fuck. They don't do that at the store no more. Nobody comes in to bump no, anybody no, like no, that. No, and if can. they do, they do 15 minutes. I don't mind. Judd Appletoe's been coming in. Yeah. I don't mind. And, and he'll do 15. Yeah, and they get off He's stage. not doing an hour, mind. two hours. Mind. Listen, man, my uh, it was a long time without the store. I really appreciate it again. I of got course. the appreciation I got when I remember being out there one night at 1 o'clock in the morning and waiting. Like in those days, that was the last. No, no, no. Oh. If there were spots till two, but yeah. she would give me one in the morning, and I'm just sitting out there one night talking to Dave Tyree, <laughs> and going, "Here I am at one in the morning." He goes, "I guarantee if they put that sign up, spots at the comedy store one in the morning, they'd still get a hundred signatures." How lucky are you? <laughs> you know, how lucky am I? Oh, yeah. That's how I look. I'm very fortunate, man. That's right. I'm That's very, true. you know, when I went into the Laugh Factory, they told me. He told me to leave, buddy. You don't belong in this town. You belong in a nightclub. <gasps> you're, what? You're the nightclub comedian. You're dirty. People love you in Las Vegas. Go to Las Vegas. I didn't do it. I didn't listen to him. No. The improv not. made me a regular, but the comedy store, she loved exactly what the fuck we were doing. Yeah, because she, she loved exactly. It. All got, different. All different. Like, you can never look at the lineup and go, oh, all these people are the same. They're all You might go in different. there and Brian Shell might be up there doing impersonations <laughs> of Elvis. Or, Remember the, or ma- Heath Heights the main room? She'd have that Janice Hart. Janice Hart. Swinging shit around her neck. What was oh. the fat chick? What was the Italian chick from Boston? Oh, Cheryl Vendetti. Where is she? Uh, she, said she just got married to a woman, and uh, she's doing great. She just bought a house in Studio City. Cheryl Vendetti's still around? Yeah. She's doing comedy. I think so. I think she does a cooking show, okay. comedy cooking show, something like that. Favorman together. Oh, I know Favorman does it too, but I, I think Cheryl does. I don't know. I have to look that up. I could have messed that up. It's just amazing the people that. But she went was a great there. girl. Yeah. I went through there with a lot of great people, a lot of shitty people. To go up there, yeah. Now, I just told Ari the other on the phone. Like, I don't know how you feel. I think I'm gonna get him on the show next week. I think right now I go the best working comic is Sebastian Maniscalco. Wow, interesting. I think uh, he's made me fucking pee the last three weeks in there, and it's hard to make me laugh at this point in the fucking game. I bro. agree. He's made me fucking laugh. But hard. he's so overly animated. I love it. I can't. I, I like that it. kind of shit. He's Andrew kills meets me. Dan Cook. Yes. He's Andrew meets Dan Cook. A but he definitely Andrew. found himself. He found himself. But for and a while, he was. And that's what makes him was, funny. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes him very funny is that he found himself. That material is for him. He yeah. knows how the fucking thing about the chipotle, the meat and the cheese is out. Look, about, but the, the bouncing. The bouncing, I fucking <laughs> died. You know, little things like My that. My niece is 12. She loves him because they can watch it. And he don't curse. He doesn't curse. He, he bounces around. He's silly. You know, that's weird. I and never realized he was clean. Yeah, ish. He can be dirty. He can but, be dirty, but, but he won't. Okay. He prefers... If they pay him big money, he'll be cleaning and then go bed to head. That's crazy. Because some comics, when they're clean, you like it really ha- you notice it. I never noticed with him. That's He's weird. the second guy I'm impressed with the most. Who's the first? You. Oh, I love but that. You know what that... Bro, when I met Sebastian, he was like Vito. Remember when they brought Vito over? He was half retarded. <laughs> Remember, he wouldn't. He kept singing that song on with no shirt on and the fucking hole. I think I let What? The, in, the, in the Godfather, Godfather, too. Godfather that's what I, I'm when like, they brought Vito over, Godfather. he was retarded at first. Later on, he blossomed. <laughs> Somebody sucked his dick and he got crazy. Of course. But when they first brought him Who from knew? Italy, I didn't know the backstory. Remember when he had the fucking measles? 
and they put him in the room by himself, and he was singing out the window. <laughs> Then he got his dick sucked. Then he got his dick fast. sucked, and the autism jumped right out of him. That's what, <laughs> the autism. That's what gets you. You gotta get one of those nine-year-olds to get his dick sucked real good. He was pinning a, a dollar to Mary, and, that and that fucking that was autism it. jumps right out of you like a fucking. He just lumps away. What does he do? He just he just creeps away the fucking. And autism. we wonder why we're not higher in the iTunes charts. <laughs> We're gonna suck, suck the Why? autism right out of them. I think it all suck my dick. iTunes, the autism people. I don't give a fuck. Why? Let me give a shout out to some beautiful people here. Please. Daryl, Marriott, William McGrath, I love you, clock sucker. Michelle El Nino, Michael El Nino, who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> Adam Rose, Peter Kendrick, James Middlewich, Lando, Ray Dean Podcast, Brandon O, and Jared Chorizo. I don't know. I want to give you a shout out. That's it. That's all that's going on. You know, that's very nice. Know. Who are these people? Nice people that, you know, they, they listen to the podcast, they subscribe, they always make a nice comment. So I try to make that day by telling them I acknowledge them. You know, I love there that you you're here. You listen. Thank you for fucking supporting us. We use this type of language. You talk about ISIS armpits. Not everybody likes this. You know what I'm saying? People who listen to Lawrence Welk would never turn this show on. You no, I, so I'm not going to. La cancioneta. I'm here in this <laughs> fucking room. I remember singing. My, they you know. killed my mother. They killed my father. They killed my brother. And they sent the me autism. on a fucking <laughs> boat and shit. He got the autism sucked out of him. Yeah. That's you know, amazing. I, what do you have to do to get the ISIS armpit out? I don't. You have to take baths. No. That's well, a good. Uh, I don't know if there's like a sexual thing. Bro, I don't even think ISIS exists. <laughs> what? I think it's really? bullshit. I was looking at the tape playing in the YMCA. I was on the epileptical. And I'm watching this thing epileptical? go down. If you're going to chop my head off, I'm going to run. You're going to catch me. They just sit there like fucking <laughs> dummies. Like, all right, chop my head off. And they got an orange robe on. You know how <laughs> it would take nine of those fucking stinky I fucks to more, put a robe but, on yeah. me. And after you made me kneel down, if I know you're coming with a hot knife, you don't have to catch me and cut my fucking head off. Don't you me. think they drug them or well, something? I got, mean, most people don't them. move. Yeah. I think they drug them. They're just sitting there like fucking, like one of Jerry's kids. They don't know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. They're just oh sitting there God. like in a fucking chair. Like we just dropped down again on the iTunes. Who gives a no, fuck I would, about iTunes? I would just love. I don't give a fuck no more. We're talking what's in your heart here. I would like Wolf fuck. Blizzard to be like, and now we have special correspondent Joey Diaz. Fuck yes. Wolf and in, his in, in Iraq. Them fucking people. Like, those fucking assholes aren't real. <laughs> fuck the ISIS. Fuck Iraq. I don't. I, what am I gonna do? I, I, I'm only one. Uh, I agree. I can't you're go right. to war with everybody. But you, you're right. It would take a lot more. They would have to draw. They definitely draw them because I, I would something. flip the fuck. They just sit okay. there like you get ready for <laughs> I'm you. I'm a shot street fighter, head. man. Okay, I'm not gonna move. What? <laughs> this motherfucker show up with this black mask on. I'm doing something. Unless they tie my feet. <laughs> What well, are you going to do, Typo? I'll fucking run for it and give him an elbow. I'll do something. I'll bite that motherfucker. You could stab me 18 times. I'm fat. I don't give a fuck. But I don't believe they just sit there. That's why I think those tapes... Bro, we have it. Wrong. You something know what? Wrong. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. We never saw Obama bin Laden. We don't know he did anything. For sure. We don't know nothing. We know they show we us never films. Will. We yeah. know they show us films. Look at this fucking flight. Went down. Nobody said nothing. Now we realize the Russians shot it down. Really? And of people course, still Ukraine, ain't saying yeah. nothing. That flight that Everybody's was missing all summer? About it. That was the Russians who shot that oh, down. Oh, shit. First well, one. well, did you see that another one of their f planes went down, Malaysian Airlines? Yeah, that's the kiss of death. Russians are just shooting them at will. It's like a fucking TV game for them. <laughs> What's that? These white kids, they buy those games, they sit there. Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, Grand, look at me. <laughs> I'm stealing a car. Russia said, fuck it. Let's just Watch shoot this. down a bunch of Malaysians. Yeah. What do they got? <laughs> 2,000 of them left? How many people are left in Malaysia? Go look at their population. What do they got? Ten fucking Malaysians? When was the, I'll give you a dollar. Tell me the last time you met a fucking Malaysian. A dollar I'll give you. When was the last time you met a fucking Malaysian? I really don't know. They Every time they leave, the Russians shoot them. Down. Oh, they're planning <laughs> to leave at 10. Get the fucking machine ready. 29 million. They and keep, I don't know not one fucking Malaysian. Planes. And they keep getting the fucking planes. I don't know one Malaysian. Either. I don't know one fucking Malaysian. I was trying to think of it, but then I figured I was Polynesian from like the Chinese food restaurants, but... Polynesian's complete. They're I know. Like, they're, they're an island. I know. I figured that out. How I'm many really people out. are in Polynesia? I don't know. Let's find out. Are you Googling this? Yes. Wow. We don't fuck around. I know. This is impressive. One of these Opie producers. Uh, Lee gets right to it. He really does. We don't fuck around. I'm sorry. You know, these Malaysian people. I don't know these people. I don't, I don't know. Like Joan Rivers. I don't know these people. <laughs> Two million for Polynesia. 
Oh, that went down. That dropped a lot. There used to be a Polynesian restaurant when I was yeah. growing up, the Mai Kai. Delicious. Spare ribs. That's what my friend used to call the bartender. He'd let him karate chop for five bucks. <laughs> what? For five bucks. Roger Holloway, the Irishman. He would be talking to him in mid-conversation. The bartender would walk over and he'd go, Charlie. The guy would bend over and he'd go, ha! <laughs> <laughs> Give him a 20. Here you go. Go ahead, go away. The, then he talk to you a little bit more. The Polynesian was named Charlie? The guy's name was Charlie. Nice. And at the and at the Chan's Dragon Inn, he was a Chinese Chinese guy, and his name was Harry. Oh, uh, they always have. They were Harry. trying to whitewash him. They always whitewash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always have Harry, Jackie. I don't eat their food. None you don't of eat it. Chinese food? None of it. The entire Orient. Mm-mm. No sushi. Yeah. Nothing. I don't trust them. Dog, I love China. Wait I don't know. Maybe Australia. Australia. Yeah, Australia I'm gonna be real thin. Yeah, I'm gonna be real thin. Chinese food. And I'm Australia gonna lose a lot China. of weight. What are you gonna eat? No sort of kangaroo meat. You're not gonna I eat don't shit. Know. Don't they have good Chinese food in Philly? Fuck I don't yeah. know. I wouldn't go there. You don't eat Chinese. Since when don't you eat Chinese food? Since I'm born. Since Why life. is this? I don't know. Maybe since my dad was in Korea or something. I don't know. I don't eat that shit. So your whole family eat Chinese food? Uh, some of them do. But we don't. It's not like a thing. We never had like Chinese night. I don't what know. What a shame. <laughs> what a fucking shame. We're Irish. Shame. We like bland food, you know? We like. You would break Steve Simone's heart right now. He would like. Yeah, you would I know. I love that bit with the thing. But he grew up in the suburbs. They know where to go. I mean, we have a uh, Chinatown in Philly, in the uh, center city. I went there before. I didn't eat nothing. You don't eat the spare ribs or nothing. When was the last time you ate pork fried rice? <laughs> Never. I don't rice. eat rice. At all. Mm-mm. Steam rice. No. <laughs> Since when? Since I'm never, I've never. What my, about Mexican rice? My brother rice? Billy told me they were, that the that the rice were maggots. What about Mexican he rice? He said they turn into that in your stomach. Nope, never had it. Oh my goodness. I never even had. A, well, I used to eat hot dogs until we were like me, Billy, and Bobby. My brothers were fighting over. There was two, and then we, you know, flipped for it, and me and Bobby won, and Billy didn't, and Billy's like a terrorist. So he watched me boil these things, and I was. I don't know, eight, nine, and I was boiling it. My mom was sleeping because she had 10 kids and she was raising us by herself, so she was out like a fucking light. And we were just up at like, it was like three in the morning. I was making them, and as I was about to eat it, Billy, my brother Billy was like, be careful you don't bite a vein. And I was like, what? He goes, you know that's like a cow's dick. And I was like, are you kidding? And that was it. Me and Bobby threw up and he ate both of our hot dogs. And I never had one since, since that day. You're retarded. You, know what? <laughs> you really are retarded. If I knew this, I wouldn't have you on the podcast. No, I'm really this. fucking retarded. So what do you eat? I eat plain, very you plain eat chicken. Steaks? Yes. Okay. I eat steak. I eat, eat meat. Yeah, pl- uh, like a burger, cheeseburger. You take good care of you, so you don't need to eat I rice. Don't, rice is like a really it, empty calorie. Anymore. It's not about. I eat pasta, tons of pasta. It's not about because I like sweets. Like I, I rode my bike to Santa Monica to get a pumpkin pie donut at Dunkin' Donuts. I don't fuck around. You know what I mean? I'll do that. I also ate an entire ice cream cake the other night. I have problems. What kind of ice cream cake? Carvel. Don't fuck around now. I Come bought, on. I bought one for Mercy's birthday. We all fucking so devoured it. It's, you know, look, it was this big. Yes, it's I terrible. ate the whole thing. It's tiny. He yeah. might have kicked you out if you just said something other than Carvel. No, no, because Baskin's Robin ain't bad, but okay. Carvel I don't like the, the Baskin Robin. My, my, I don't Val like it Dice's wife had that for uh, uh, her mom's party, and, and Max... They both just had birthdays, and it was that praline. Right, and you put like nuts, you start either. fucking yeah, yeah. around. Uh-uh. Carvel know. cake is <gasps> yeah. to die for from Ralph's right here in Sherman Oaks. Yeah. They got them. All of them got them. Yeah, but then you the can get the little one. one. The little tiny just one. ate it all by myself. I think we still have half. No, because it wouldn't have gone. That was so fucking good on so her birthday. Good. We tore that shit up. Carvel, I grew up on that Did shit. Mercy get any of it? Huh? Did Mercy get all of that for you guys? Yeah. No, it was <laughs> Mercy's birthday. It was her birthday. When's her birthday? January 8th. Oh, okay. Elvis. So we made it last year. Yeah, Elvis. Just so like uh, Ran is Easy's son. Yeah, so we made it last uh, last year. We said it for on her birthday. And we're thinking of doing a birthday party. She had the track. In the middle of the track. <laughs> you can have a party. Like when we really? Went. Yeah. So get a Carvel cake. Get some uh, pastrami. Get some fucking Cuban food. Some pork. Some black beans and rice. And throw it down. In the I'll circle. eat the cake. Yeah. <laughs> during the, it's going to be during the week. Her birthday's like on a Thursday or something. I'm at the Melrose Improv that for, at Saturday night, so we haven't decided for a two-year birthday. I don't know where the fuck we throw the party at. That's great. Two we year, huh? With fucking people with kids, you know? Really down, uh, Lauren has, you remember Lauren yeah, Peltz, yeah, my yeah. best friend? She has two kids. Uh, a, she's she'll still be three. 
Huh? No, Sorry. no, no. She left. She left because her uh, she got pregnant, and um, they have two kids now, and her her son is uh, named Jedi, <laughs> and people make fun of her. But I love it. I think it's cool. Jedi Xavier Fishman. So cute. And that is, he's like, uh, Star Trek Wars? Which one is it? Who's Jedi? Star Wars. Star Thank you. He's a Star Wars so Jew. She doesn't work at, where is she working at? No more she agents? helps with her husband. He's a producer. He puts TV shows on the internet. Okay. And he has a huge company and has a ton of shows and stuff that he does work with uh, LeBron James. They have a bunch, of sh- a bunch of shows that were nominated for Webleys. Like, that's the web episode thing. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So Danny has a huge company, and um, Lauren helps with him, but for the most part, she's got two kids. You know, she's got under one and a two and a half year old. Top fucking ages, dog. Yeah. What's up, Lee? Look at the you shape. I was thinking, I was like thinking you were going to have Mercy go out, go beat up Jedi Xavier. Maybe. Why? Maybe. Just because he, He's I got can, a lightsaber. He hates that name. I, I can just tell. Tell me the truth. Do you hate it or you like it? What, the name Jedi? <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Don't listen to that. Yeah. Jedi <laughs> Xavier I mean, Danger, Danger Fishman. Danger, yeah. Danger's his middle name. kicks his fucking ass. <laughs> it's fucking danger right there. Let's have a play date then. <laughs> Let's make them shit. fight each other. No. Fuck it. Come on. You know, I don't He's want a big kid. Plus, it's Peltz's kid. She, don't, she don't get offended. I don't want my daughter in that world yet. And she's still... I was thinking about it tonight. I was looking at her drawing, you know? And I think about my mom. Like, my mom was a great mom and a lot of avenues. But one thing my mom took from me was that innocence from, like, 7 to 10. Like, I wasn't that innocent anymore. Like, I was already doing fucked up shit. Sure. That kids that age didn't do. And she didn't give a fuck. And that's why I don't giggle. I'm not a giggling type of guy. I don't react to that shit, you know. They just, and I don't want to take that from Mercy. All that fighting and all that. That's bullshit. I don't want Yeah, but that. it was a different time, I It was think, a different because time. Because I have a nephew that just turned 14, and my mother says, 14, there's no way that kid's 14. You know? I mean, we just grew up in a different time. Now you can do that. Keep their innocence. You can coddle them a little more. I mean, they're kind of pussies now, but, you, you know, they're, they're still... Pussies, <laughs> yeah. Not that you want to coddle them. But you don't want, want them to save be... that. Yeah. I lost that at seven or uh, eight. Like, easily. Not that, not that I was... I was a light. I lost my life's virginity, not my sexual virginity. I lost my life virginity at a younger age. Usually, people lose it at fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. Their life virginity, where they see a little bit more than the rest of the kids. I lost it at eight. At eight, I already had shit in my head that I shouldn't have. And I was smoking at nine. Yeah, it's just full blown smoking. We just were. We were. We were robbing out of the uh, supermarket. We would have competitions. Who could steal the most? I mean, like, we were, like, retarded. Now, where's your dad? Your dad my, and mom My parents together? split up. How old were you? Uh, eight or nine. It was, like, right in between. And your dad remarry? Yes. And he's he only a- moved, like, five blocks away. He was right there. He just didn't really give a shit. But, hey, yeah, all right. And no, are you guys kidding. tight with him? Well, yeah, we are. We are tight. Like, I make fun of him a lot, but I did have to work for him every day from fourth grade all the way to 12th grade in the typewriter store because my mom had to go get a real job because typewriters weren't paying the bills. And he wasn't paying child support. And there was 10 kids. So the older half just started working after school. And then we were like, oh, what do we do? You know, so we got in trouble a lot. But then he would make us come to the typewriter store and we would like have to sweep up or answer the phone and things like that. Like we had jobs. We had jobs to do. Not chores. You grew up middle class. Lower middle class. I would go even lower. And that's uh, that's like a class that's been taken out of this country. Pretty much, yeah. Like I don't. I don't know. We would be poverty stricken now. I guess. It's amazing how much things have changed. How hard it is for a family of four. Yeah. Two children and a parent and a wife. How hard it is. Can't go to Laker games. Dodger games are out of your future. Unless you get beat See, up. See, I never did that. And people are like, "How come you don't go to games? Because we can <coughs> afford that." And my mom worked for the Phillies and the Eagles. That was her second job. How did Christmas even work? It was with insane. 10 kids? It was in, I don't know how she did it. I really, really don't. I like because she would make it like it was the best. People would come to our house and be like, "This is the best, everything." And we didn't really have much. Sometimes she would buy shit from a fire sale, but we would turn it into because we were a little creative, like you know, change it up a little bit, and then wow, this is the best game ever. And she was like, "I didn't even think it worked like that," which it probably didn't. But that's what we did. 
So we would just like turn things around. We had the best time. All my brothers, and, my older brothers and sisters are so creative. It's a sin. Like they love to make costumes and shit like that. Like my sister Karen makes amazing costumes and she designs all of the costumes for my nieces that because uh, they do. Uh, she's a dancer. And so she makes all of her costumes and always has like her whole life. She's amazing with that. And then co they would win every Halloween costume. They would go up Center City or go up South Street and win like five thousand dollars, ten thousand on all these prizes because they were good like that. They just turn it into something. It's really amazing when you grow up uh, not having a lot of things. Yeah. How you figure out how to make something out of nothing. Out of nothing. And yeah. you figure out. And, and I was very fortunate growing up. My uh -huh. mom always had money until my mom died. And then I was thrown into the avenue where you grew up. Yeah, yeah. I got to see it. I got to see three kids in a house and how they acted. And wow. What I thought was life. Well, I thought it was just three kids liking each other. Yeah, I know. Really? Well, why <laughs> yeah. do you have my fucking socks on? I didn't know that were your fucking socks, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you're just, pulling a knife out of one brother's hand so he don't stick it in the other brother's eye, it's a fucking problem. But that's what we did. That's a, you, get, you would make yourself crazy like that. It's really amazing that you, when you talk to people, you could tell who grew up wanting and who grew up, you know, looking down. Like, you yeah. Know, you could tell in a way, like, when I talk about a child, a rough childhood, I'm not talking about you getting fucked in the ass by the priest. I'm talking about a rough childhood when you come home at five and there's nobody home because they're both working. Yeah. That's a rough childhood when you come Everybody's home. Everybody's working. Make your own fucking sandwich till seven and fend for yourself till seven. And we love it as kids, but think about it. We all rather come home and have your mom waiting for you with an apron on with Can cookies. Can you imagine? And my mom would have loved that. Yeah, my mom. My mom you know, would have loved that. Your mom didn't work. Uh, for a little bit, but then for most of my childhood, no. And then when you got home at three, she was there. Yeah, my dad. Would, my dad worked nights, so he was there a lot too. Was oh he, wow! Was he with cookies, ready to rub your feet? My mom was. My dad worked downstairs, but uh, <laughs> really, I don't. I almost don't want to even bring it up. But we're talking about kids. What, like, what do you think about like that Adrian Peterson shit? That's going on. No. Well, it, it, like, I mean, it, honestly, <laughs> if you're hitting. <laughs> We got our asses kicked. Yeah. Dude, my father hit us. I don't us get it. I don't understand. With it. belts, yeah. buckles, I mean, shit. Cars, my dad would hit. My dad was a fucking Marine. He was crazy. Like, this is hilarious. We just didn't have the capability of an iPhone to rat them out and say, hey, this fucker's hitting me. You can't do that. That's what they did. The kid ratted him out. Other than a couple spankings, I was very lucky. I never really got much of it. My mom used to it, hit us with a wooden spoon. Remember that? So what you're telling me is in today's society, you cannot hit your child. If you lay a hand on your child, the cops are going to come. Yes. If you grab your child and go, you cannot fucking stick your fork. Fike. Yeah. You cannot stick your fucking fork in the electrical outlet. You'll right. go to jail if she presses charges on you. I guess. These little shits. And it Can sounded weird. Like, the way I heard it described in the news was, like, the law is... It's basically like based on what the community thinks. So there's no like set law like you can't you can't do the stick, but you can do the belt or just the hand. It's right. like based on whatever that that jury thinks is over the line. I do think he took it a little too far. I mean, I, I, the thing is, is like when you're getting hit, and I, I believe my dad took it too far, but we weren't gonna say anything. He's a big fucking guy. He's got a lot of weapons. <laughs> we didn't say anything, but there was times where like my brother Jimmy couldn't go in to Christmas dinner at my aunt's house because my dad beat him up so bad and he was you know i mean literally like he was a street fighter so yeah. you, can, you know it's i don't agree with what the man did no but i'm saying you know i think it's just it, everybody does it i just don't know that everybody gets caught if he wasn't a political figure would anybody even care or know about it no it happens all the time it sucks the wife the ray rice thing I was talking to my mom about that, and I was like, what did you think? You know, did you see the video? And she's like, you know, she go, I go, she hit him like 30 times. Not that I agree that he should hit her back, but still, she did hit him a lot. And it, my dad taught me never hit anybody unless you expect to get hit back, no matter who or what it is. If it's a dog, if it's a man, if it's a whatever, you're going to get hit back. So I was like, all right, I'm, I believe what my dad said. But I was talking to my mom, and she told me that a long time ago she was pregnant with one of the older brothers and sisters, and she got mad at him, and she was hitting him. And I go, you hit him? My dad's a big guy. And I go, you hit him? What did he do? She goes, he didn't do anything. 
he was seething. She goes, he literally was foaming at the mouth. And he was like, if you hit me one more time, I'm going to hit you. And she goes, go ahead. I dare you. And I go, damn, you got ball. This guy's crazy. Like, he joined the Marines so he can kill people and not have to go to jail for it. Like, he's a little off. You know what I mean? And she's, like, pushing his buttons. I thought it was That's great. That's what women do. Exactly. That's but I said, I, I almost called my dad and said, hey, man, thanks for not hitting her back. Shit. Well, you you know, I want to stab Terry every other fucking day, too. You know? Fuck. But that's, she don't that's hit what you, love right? is. No, but yeah. she might as well hit me when she don't turn the light off. And I told her, <laughs> you might as well fucking hit me when I told you ten times, turn that fucking light off in the hallway. I can't watch TV when you got it on, you know? I might as well you fucking hit me. How many times you got, how many times you got to tell you to fucking turn this light on? What are we, fucking 10 here? It's, the it's best. amazing how many times you got to tell what, well, what do you think it is? Because it's, it's funny, because that's like a simple thing. And then I have friends that fight over a car seat being moved up and back. Oh, no. Okay. Sometimes you... I, I, so it's like, do women just not retain it? Or do they just not think about it? Because it's always the girl I who doesn't do the know. thing. I don't know what the fuck's on her mind. <laughs> I don't fucking A kid. Know. I don't ask. She's it. chasing a baby nah, around. This is before the fucking baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> when you I ask you, if you take Sorry, the, Terry. I tried to help you If you fucking take shit out, turn the fucking light off in the balcony. <laughs> we need, you we know, need Terry to call in and many, talk about you, her Terry side of the, the TV light on. How many fucking nights I come home and the balcony <laughs> light is on? I turn the bathroom to pee and the light's on in the back. And I'm like, people can't fucking sleep. You she like forgets. She forgets. It's it's it's. That's the funny. I don't like repeat. I grew up in a house that they tell you, you one say fucking it and that's time. It. I grew up in a society where people tell you one time, "Leave me for don't park there." That's yeah, it. and that's it. You don't park there. There's not never. why. Why not? It's a free country. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right, then park there. And the next your time you park there, fire. your car's on fire. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to. I told you not to park there. Yep. Who the fuck are you to question anything? Just park next to it. Park around the corner. I don't give a fuck where you park. We just told you don't fucking park there. Don't worry about who or why. It's a free country. There's no free. There's no fucking free. Not in this neighborhood. Not in this fucking day. We're free. Ain't no fucking free. My my brother Jimmy's wife, she leaves all the house lights on. I don't know why. Like, she'll go in every room. And it's just a little row home. You know, it's not a big, elaborate, but it's every. And he goes, hey. Madison Avenue. Yeah, what the fuck? Shut the fucking lights, up. The fucking lights like up. My wife will tell you a story at the park <laughs> for 10 minutes and not look at Mercy. Mercy's over there running. She's telling you, so Jen, Terry, I don't give 10 <laughs> fucks about Jen. That's what I give a fuck about. Look at that right there. Don't take your fucking eyes off her, all right? And she'll look at me like I'm crazy. Don't take your fucking eyes off her. No story that you have to tell me is as interesting as that little thing running over there. And if you do want to tell me a story, tell me the story. Just look that way. Right. Look that way. You can tell me whatever fucking story you want 20 times. I don't give a fuck. I'll listen. I'll jump up and down. <laughs> but look that way. Don't look at me. Thank you. And every time she'll tell me a story, I go, Terry, look that way. That's the it's funniest thing. It fucking, fucking drives way. me crazy. You got to watch these kids. Dogs you come definitely out of nowhere. Have to. You know, I'm all fucking school, man. Dogs come out of nowhere. That's funny you say that. That's exactly how I feel. Dogs I, I'm come out terrified of, of that. I'm, I'm petrified for her because it fucked my world up. For five or six years, when I started getting bit by dogs, you create this fear, and then you're scared of animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I wasn't intelligent enough to overcome it on my own when I was like seven, it would have followed me till I was like thirty. Because you're not, you have this fear of a certain yeah. fucking thing. So I, I put it together when I was like eight or nine that the more I tightened up around them, they were gonna they bite sense me. Sense fear. When yeah. I loosen up, they won't bite me. So do you know how hard it is at a young age to have fear? But to cool, keep it cool, most people can't. You can't do that till you're 16, 17. But I had to put it together. Now I was going to keep getting fucking bit. You know what I'm saying? I re- keep your eyes on the fucking kid, Terry. Don't keep look your eyes, at me. Terry. I don't give a fuck about Tennessee or, <laughs> or who's playing the guitar <laughs> for Led Zeppelin. Ain't got nothing to do with me, dog. <laughs> it really don't. Look straight Poor the Terry. fuck ahead. Don't take your eyes off the fucking She's kid. She's in out. my prayers. <laughs> She's in my fucking prison. I'm curious about Tennessee. Yeah, they tell you all this shit. Is that where she's from? No. Yeah. Yeah, they want to tell you like all these rules. I don't give a fuck. Listen, come here. Let me tell you something. I told you 10 years ago, I'm going to tell you again. I don't give a fuck. If my weed ain't on fire and my sneakers are fine, I don't give a fuck. My sneakers are fine. I can't wait to have a conversation with Mercy. Like a like three or four one, like you can actually go back and forth. Oh, can't wait. That's gonna be an Emmy award winning show. Oh, please, that's my girl. <laughs> that's my little Irish woman. Girl, I'm trying to raise her to be a killer. 
Me and my uh, boyfriend fight over saying What's his sneakers. Boyfriend? How many months you been with? A uh, little over a year. Really? Look yeah. at Eleanor. Uncle shit. Ronnie. Wait, Look but he, his, he, we fight over because he says uh, tennis shoes. Fuck are tennis shoes. Sneakers. Sneakers. Oh, fuck tennis shoes. He grew up in shoes. Atwater. He's yeah, a hood rat. Yeah, poor thing. Go. By the way, that retard you broke his heart. He's never been the same. Which one? Uh, Rick. Oh my God. I spent. I didn't break his that heart. That fucking kid on. He Twitter. broke his own heart. That fucking Momo on Twitter. He talks so much shit, man. What is I had to ban him or whatever Everybody it's called. Fla- I block block I from you block the him on Facebook. Yeah, because he was writing nasty shit about kids. Yeah, hey man, you can write whatever the fuck you want about dice or wheels. Say it to their face. Let them fucking fight you. They're old enough, but don't talk about the kids, man. Their kids didn't do shit to you. They can't. They're not responsible for whatever fight After you had with him Twitter twenty things, fucking years ago. I think about three weeks ago, I decided that there's mental health issue there. No, he's fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, mental health. Is it the, I mean, the Twitter guy? This kid, yeah, he's he was a dear comic, friend of mine. and he was funny. he was here. He was here a month ago. I know. I was out. I was in La Jolla. Thank God. I was he was here. Yeah, because I would have beat him for up. A spot that they were gonna. They didn't give him a spot. That his name was on the wall, and I'm like. You see that, no. that you said that earlier. Just because you got passed, you got to stay relevant, man. You can't just get passed and think it's over. You made it. No, she you won't. Gotta you got to work stuff. hard, man. You got to work hard. And you can't just tag out and go for six years and you know. <laughs> come back after eight years. I'm gonna be nice, but I'll skip a lot. But I'm saying like, come back and just think, oh, everybody, the, the sea should part because you were funny eight years ago on stage. You know, no, you, fuck that. Don't know who they were. He said he even told me himself. Because he didn't call me because he knew I would say, why are you here? Yeah. Because I would never, you know, it's a constant, I love him. I love that kid. But it's a constant, if you have a, it's a cigarette, it's a lighter, if you have a rolling paper. Do you, you have, have a lighter toothpaste? For the rolling, you have what? Toothpaste. Do you have a toothbrush? Oh, no, no. You never. know, if you pick him up, <laughs> if you pick him up, you're stuck with him because the house he was supposed to stay at, when you get there at two in the morning. Mm-mm. They're not going to be there. Yeah, They're going to leave home. the key. Mm-mm. Now you're stuck with them. And it's a whole weekend. And you really want to go get something to eat? Well, oh, I lost my wallet on the plane. Now you give yeah. them cigarettes, money. It's nonstop. And he would call me and say, Tommy, just offer me the weekend with Ahoy. And i tell him, there's no reason for you to come out here. Plane ticket's 800. You're getting five. Yeah. <laughs> you got three kids. <laughs> exactly. You, you can't lose 800. Because you want to come in and relive the fucking glory days. He's in New York. Yeah. And, Go and, up on the fucking And he's in New night. York. He's in such a bad spot that they don't even put witness relocation there. He's with the I services. used to try to talk to him. But I tried it, to. He got cuckoo yeah, for yeah, Cocoa got, Puffs, and I said, fuck this, man. No, I, and that, now he's not working. How do you not work when you have three children? I see him on he Twitter. He was working at the furniture store. That's done. And then he got fired from the bar. The comedy place. He was too funny for everybody. They yeah, he was so too lost. funny. Yeah, usually when you're too funny, yeah, they, they ask you to they leave. They ask you to leave. Yeah. So no, it's a it's a fucking work Fucker. in progress. You know, we've been through a lot. You know, whether I'm on Rogan's podcast or somebody's here, we always talk about the storm. I'm sure you people at home sit there and go, "What the fuck?" What are they? Talking it's our about? training ground, guys. Yeah. It's it's our gym. It's our connection to one another. Whether it's myself and Dice and Joe, and Wheels and uh, Wheels with his goatee. Takes him an hour to cut that thing now. <laughs> cut the goatee, put selfies of himself. Him and his at the selfies gym. are too much. I lost 48.8 pounds. Look Dude, out he, for me. He really did lose like 150 pounds, but I don't need the selfies. I told him. I said, I'm going to unfollow. Flexing you. his One arm. One more selfie and I'm unfollowing. Flexing you. his arm so you can see his tricep. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that fucking abuse. Lee, how are you feeling? I'm How's super it going, Lee? You ain't high enough, though. We got to eat this Chibo. Yeah, yeah, your eyes are still Let's open. Let's kill this motherfucking Chibo Chew Lee. I don't it's think wet. You're... It's Monday, cocksucker. Get it together here. We got Bray this weekend. How you gonna act? Okay. Yeah. How you gonna, gonna act on Bray all weekend? People wait for you. Do you do stand up? No. I got your hotel room for Friday night. Wow. You know what I'm saying? You're That's in Bray really the fun. weekend. It's over. And there's edibles. Companies are coming down. We got stockings and cape for you. See? Look at you. Oh. This is over. You got a cape for me? I'll come down. You know, cape. No more fucking around with you. What I tell you today in the, in the text message? When I text going you deep. going down heavy. That's it. No more games. No more half pieces of Chibo Chews. Uh-huh. We're going for whole pieces on Wednesday <laughs> night. It's all over. You got to get into reefer shape. Do you live walking distance? No, well, kind uh, of, but I'll try. This is Lee Sayat. This is the man. He, he don't give a fuck. It's too hot to be walking. I don't know. Who's going to walk? No, I agree. Yeah, who's gonna it's hot. Go I don't have air conditioning for, either. I went back you, to you don't have air conditioning. Where? I don't like air conditioning. What? 
and I don't have air conditioning in my apartment. It was one of the big selling points for me. <laughs> how do you, how, how do you live? No selling points, no rice, <laughs> no ice cream. What are you I have ice bro? cream's in. Ice cream's oh good. My God. Any candy, cake, so what's ice the deal cream, with, sweets, what's all the deal that with shit. What's fucking air conditioning? What air conditioning ever do to you? It gets, it gets, look, I'm freezing. People think I passed away. It's freezing. It's in my bones. I ain't got no iron in my blood. It's 100 degrees outside at it's all right. 10 p.m. How do you sleep at night? <laughs> no, you're I don't sweat. I glisten. You glisten. <laughs> oh. You have a fan? Yeah, I have a couple fans. I have let them what go happened to your gay there. roommate? You still have Christopher. Him? He moved back to uh, Massachusetts. So you still live in the same place? No, I moved, I'm like by the Beverly Center. How long did you live there for at that place? Oh, my God. Me and Chris lived together for like 12 years. And I they think. raised the rent now. Oh, yeah. I'm Remember great. that place? You lived there, too, no, upstairs. No, oh, no, Keith, your friend. friend. That's right. Keith lived there. Remember that pool? Oh, God, that pool was the best. Up that top. pool was nice. Me and Freddie, we would go up there. Corey, there's some crazy girl from the Holtzman's building. I forgot her name. She the black girl with the hiv? No, nah, she yeah. had, like, pretty blue eyes, long brown hair. There was that black girl I took <laughs> home one night. She had She was blowing wounds. everybody, yeah. That black girl with the freckles. She was like a light-skinned <laughs> sister. Or the other one. Uh, this wasn't a black girl. This was, I think her name was Psalm or something. I forget. This was a black girl that one night asked me to give her a ride to her boyfriend's house. And I put the light She had open her. wounds? She had open wounds everywhere. Oh, oh, no. The fucking hiv was coming out of Wait her up. fucking. Oh, no. The hiv was coming, leaking out of her <laughs> fucking mosquito bites and shit. Ew. She had open wounds on her arms. That's it wasn't sin. fucking good, guys. It was leaking, like when they're leaking. Uh-uh. uh-uh. And she was looking no. for blow, and her toenails weren't done. <laughs> nope. Like, nope. you know when your toenails got the fucking, like, somebody, like a, somebody scratched it like a ticket, like a yeah. lottery ticket. Oh, that's gross. You, like, you get a lottery <laughs> ticket, you get a scratch on a lottery <laughs> ticket, and then when you scratch on the prize, but you leave the sticker around it, <laughs> that's what her toenails look like. Like somebody had scratched the middle of it, <laughs> but had left the fucking artificial color around the toes. She was, and I'll tell you what, that's I love women, up. but once your toenail polish is fucked up, that's where it ends with Uncle Joey. It's like the opposite of the like Cat a Williams Are you fetish joke. guy? I'm not a fetish I don't want you jerking me off with your feet. I don't want to suck your feet. I just want your feet to be fucking Clean and, done. Yeah. I don't want you to touch me, and it's like your toe has a corn on it uh. that could go through a fucking wall. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> I want your feet. If you don't have that, let me know beforehand, mm-hmm. and I'll throw you the yardstick. Go get your toes fucking mm-hmm. bumped down. Go get that hoof. I have that. long toes. So. Oh, I saw that yeah. fucking one. You got like a three inch fucking toe. That <laughs> Her name's fucking. Robina. <laughs> you just, you just she clamp drives onto and a shit. Yeah, she's fucking big. She's amazing. No, there's some women. I just had to talk to my acupuncturist into it. Dr. Amy. Into Dr. what? Dr. Amy, you don't paint your toenails because I never did it. Go, you got to start. I paint them. You got to paint those fucking toes. Yeah, they long cute. ones. No, people don't care if they're long. They, yeah. Especially guys. They see themselves sucking it. My Look boyfriend at, laughs at it. Does like he that suck thing's your toes? no, he said that thing's giving me the finger. It's so long. Oh my goodness! It's what do you think, Lisa? What's going on with you, baby? What's hey, on your agenda? I'm doing good. Everything all right? Where are we going to eat tonight? You going to haha with me? Sure. Let's go get fucked up tonight. I'm already fucked up. Well, let's get some. Let's get some of that Michael Jackson oxygen. What do you get? <laughs> do you eat at the haha? Do they have food, right? No, 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 no. no. We just right go. next door, there was like a good place. They had like pizza and salads no, and stuff. No, Is no. it gone? That was a while ago. It was good. Really? Yeah. Up the block from the high? Up the block? It's like at the corner. In a strip mall. Maybe. I heard that, that pizza is not bad. It, yeah, it was good. It was like good. It was like a kind of healthy-ish. But I got it with like the feta and the spinach and all that shit. Feta? I like the feta sometimes. On pizza? Yeah, it was like <laughs> a specialty. Like you get it. There ain't no fucking specialty. No one of those people smell like armpit. <laughs> Because they're using feta cheese and shit. That makes your armpit stink. You can ask for it, with or without. No, not in my neighborhood. <laughs> no, no, only in L.A. I learned of this feta spinach. Feta on pizza? No, fuck thing. that shit. No, don't, that's what's ruining our country. It's regut. It's supposed to be regut. Sometimes you can get both in Vegas. It's killer. Vegas got good pizza. Joe's Pizza right across from the Hard Rock. That's Vegas shit right there. Vegas got good right fucking there. pizza. Yeah. But even sparrows, I'll get a fucking piece of sparrows in Vegas. I don't give a fuck. It's all the same shit. I gotta walk around, go to Joe's Pizza, and take a cab for two pieces of fucking pizza. It's so good that one. 
It's a place in Vegas. What's and it's open till four in the morning. What You're right. You yeah. What would you eat tonight if you had your choice, cocksucker? I don't know. How many points you have left? Not many. Like <laughs> three hundred calories. Three hundred. That's a slice. Yeah, but that's I don't. Two cheese slices. It fucks two you up. Two cheese slices. No, that's one. Look, and a cheese slice is one hundred fifty. No, it's not. A cheese slice is like two to three hundred. No, it's not. Full a cheese sugar. slice like this big is one hundred and fifty. Cheese slice like that is one hundred fifty. That is points. incorrect. Really? Just cheese, yeah. It's only six points. Weight Watchers. I don't a know. I never kept calories. So it's, it's six. It's sixty calories per point. So that's two hundred and forty fucking points in the mm. slice. But I went on. I had pizza yesterday, and I went on that fucking my fitness, and I put two slices of pizza. I came back with three hundred calories. Per? I don't, I don't know. Per? But it, it fucks. <laughs> like, it fucks. It fucks you when you eat late. So I'm trying not to eat past like. What? How does it fuck it? There's no true. proof of that. It yes, is it is. Uh, every proof of that. that. Every if time. you eat a salad and an apple at night, you're gonna shit out a tremendous piece of shit. <laughs> if you eat a pepperoni fucking sandwich, yeah. or a Carvel cake, you and can a Carvel shit out cake. a lot. Oh no, trust that's, me. You eat a Carvel cake, you're gonna gain Still ten fucking problems. pounds. Yeah, but it's fun. What fucking fun? What if you eat a eat? Carvel cake. What are you going to eat tonight? Tell me nothing. You I don't, you don't eat nothing. the Carvel cake. I don't have what about a turkey sandwich? How many I, I, turkey sandwiches are you going to eat before you die? But go to Santa Monica for Dunkin' Donuts, Pumpkin Pie Donuts. Is donut. it good? I haven't been there. The Pumpkin so, Pie Donut ah, is unbelievable. So let me ask you this. What's up? What are you going to eat when you get home? You're going to eat that the, the rice I'm going to try to go to bed. I, what, I, what I want what are you gonna is... What you going to go to bed for? ain't nothing going on in bed. How do you know? He's got some Mexican mariachi She's at the house. She's at the house down there. He's by himself. the alley. What are you going to do with your house by yourself? What is that eat? Um, I don't know. I got some, a couple things. Like what? I got oh, I found some fried shrimp that are not bad, calorie wise. So I got those. I want to try those. Fried shrimp. What do you do? You put them in the oven. Yeah, but fried yeah. is bad, right? Well, it's, it's like breaded. I don't think it's 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 like breaded and you bake it because I don't have a I don't have a fryer in my house. So how many calories? It's like two forty for like fourteen pieces of shrimp. Come so on. you could. I might come home with you. Yeah. Okay. I bought cocktail sauce. That's only a hundred calories for a. Like a quarter of a cup, but you don't. At you. you don't need that much cocktail sauce. Look at you! Wow, you got it all figured out. Huh? I've been trying. Johnny fucking calories. Look at you, you little red socks. Well, because I, I didn't go to the gym for two weeks, so I, was, I really didn't want to gain big like, socks. Go fan. back the other way. Eh, it's hard out here. You're a bad motherfucker, Lisa. I'm proud of you. Know? What's hard out here? There's nothing to eat out here. It's no, 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 easy no, no, out no, no, here. Not not oh. food wise, but being a baseball fan because oh. if you buy the package, like I bought the football package, that's only a, a couple games a week. Like I, well, the first time I moved out here, I did the basketball package. Mm-hmm. You have to watch a game every night. I bought the because it's so expensive, and they don't show anything. Well, no, that you, like there's a sports package, but there's like MLB, so you can see every game, and they have 160 games. I can't imagine watching 160 yeah. games, so I watch one on ESPN or something. I did it for hockey. Hockey was killer this year. You guys like hockey? That's the yeah, yeah, one I don't watch it every day. <laughs> every day, Get the fuck dick. Out of here. I love <coughs> hockey. I don't watch shit. No. I didn't even watch football yesterday. Colts were on tonight, right? Against the Eagles won. Said that. And last night, who was the f- Sunday night game? Chicago won. Chicago came back. The 49ers. Uh, 49. 49ers ain't that tough anymore, huh? A bunch no, of these they younger were killed. Qu- they were beating them. They were beating the shit out yeah, of them. Yeah, well, then a bunch of the younger quarterbacks aren't doing that great. Like, RJ3 got, just got hurt again. He broke his ankle, I think. Yeah, for sure. Guy. That's amazing. I don't know anything about sports. How fucking sad is that? I thought you did, no? For 30 years, it was my life. I don't have fucking time to sit there anymore. How can you fucking watch a game when you have to write a joke? Or I, I you write so a joke bad. during the game. I feel so Shit, bad look about at the doing NFL. anything. I feel so bad about doing anything. You know, like when you watch TV like that, you're like, there's something I could be doing, you know, so. Yeah. No. I, don't, I only watch like ESPN. I like <clears> to watch those HBO shows. I watch Boardwalk. But if I, I don't, might not make it every week. So like sometimes it gets backed up and I'll see it like. I like I'm the a, sports I'm a little bit HBO behind. shows. Oh, yeah, I, like I watch all that. Shows. I love that. Uh, also, the news one, John, what's his name? Oh, uh, last John week Oliver? tonight. Oh, I fucking love it. I haven't seen it yet. because I. He Dude, gets mad at me because I don't have HBO. Hale- what's wrong with you? Know, it's expensive. <laughs> no there's shit. A guy that went and I don't have health insurance. I have HBO. There's a guy that went and bought six shrimp for 200 calories. Yeah, there he I is. I don't want to get HBO. Get HBO. Get son. HBO because. Again. What are you going to do? How are you going to fucking live? You see the You're first. You're with a Mexican chick. She wants to watch HBO. Yes. They got four. They have HBO Latina. Channels. Come on you know, now. Get it together. And will you please? What are you saving? Twenty bucks. Not 22 even. Twenty-two bucks. It's fifteen dollars. Twenty-two fucking bucks. It's fifteen ninety-nine. Twenty-two fucking bucks. Yeah, but it adds up. Who gives a fuck? So there's uh, 
So does so ass fucking barnacles. What's ass, ass barnacles? Ass so barnacles. does cocktail sauce. Well, the shit that well, gets <laughs> glooped upside your asshole. Because even though you clean it, it goes into your pores. Yeah. So after a while, the shit that it gets starts in your breaking pores the spokes. starts sticking to the other thing. You create ass <laughs> barnacles. And you don't see it till you get steam clean or, or some chick with a cat tongue licks your asshole or something like that. And you, you know, don't like your asshole being licked, huh? No. no. Very have strange. Ever, have you ever had your asshole licked? Not That's even That's why you don't you like it. it. No. Let me explain something to you. If you get your asshole licked, you'll be a different fucking man. If I wasn't in a relationship. So oh, I would never let anybody do that. Oh, my Tanya, goodness. An Irish girl, they know how to lick your asshole. Oh. They open that motherfucker up and tongue that. Oh, no. And then they squeeze your balls like one of those bicycle horns. It's a fucking party. Lee. A bicycle. I'm horn. telling you, they squeeze that motherfucker and they suck that asshole. <laughs> and you hear that in your asshole, it's tremendously. And your dick's that's getting hot. And you don't know what to do. You would have an anxiety attack. You know what your asshole smells like. You'd let someone lick that. If I washed it correctly, yeah, I'd there's no it. right way to wash it. Yes, there is. You not, take not, Irish, that, not that You take good. Irish spring and you shove it up your ass. <laughs> and you twist it around like that. Like a fucking thing. You pull that motherfucker out. You take that hot water thing. You put it in your asshole. Yeah. And you just keep it's washing like it. It's cleanse. And you'll hear it going... <laughs> Like you're fingering like something. Yeah. All of a sudden, fucking. That's a ghetto colon that's, cleanse. That's right oh, there. fucking and amazing. And mama knows that she got to stick that tongue in your fucking muffler. You wouldn't know what to do, Lee. You would no, I would break. not. You would have you would you would have a nervous breakdown if a chick was sucking your pipe, went down, picked up your nutsack, tickled them a little bit, sucked them, <laughs> and then just look at them. Look at them, how he giggles. And then, just start, me, yeah, and then just start a machine gun your asshole with her tongue like Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know what the fuck to do, you That sounds little. terrible. No, it's not terrible. And no, it didn't freak you out the first time it happened? Fuck no. Oh, yes, it did. Why would it freak him out? First off, no. A cold had, tongue? I think I'm four, 50 There's years no old. There's no such thing as a cold tongue. I mean, oh, was she eating ice cream first? No, no, no. I had oh. a friend who was a faggot, and he said his faggot friend had a cold tongue. <laughs> That their mouths are cold when they suck <laughs> your dick. This is what he told me. But I'm 51 years old. Only two girls are tongue my asshole. I don't like it either, Lee. But when it happens, you know it's happening. <laughs> it's not like I go out looking for it. What does if that I mean? When it happens, you know it's when happening. When somebody's got their tongue up your ass, you know it's happening. And you're looking up at the ceiling, and they're making that noise like they got their tongue up your ass. Because when somebody has their tongue up your ass, they make a certain sniff noise. Like, <laughs> like they're choking, but not really. You know what I'm saying? What do you do when they're going for a kiss later? Oh, that's, oh. You kiss them. You lick oh. your own asshole. Yeah, Who gives a fuck? You take, you're all going to wash your face the same way. You yeah, know? what the fuck? Well, this is what your problem is. You're too uptight. God. If you don't start taking this girl to the hoop, she's going to leave you for a fucking attorney in two years that pulls her hair and calls Ooh. her a dirty animal and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You're over there being nice to her. You should have taken her to a dirty I'm hotel and tied her up and left her there. And gone to the comedy show, then came back and whipped her. <laughs> and called her a dirty Mexican and kicked her in the side. <laughs> I and like then this. fucked her like Zapata. <laughs> like, how, how would Viva Zapata fuck a Mexican chick? That Mexican chick. They want to run before they get fucked. When was the last time you chased this chick? This is true. Do you have a leash? She's Mexican. You don't chase her at all? And tell her immigration you don't chase her and shit like that? And Flash punch her, her badge? Her. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? You over there? How do you even like it tonight? Let me put a clown. No, you gotta fucking turn her around and lick her asshole. And once she sees the stars, then she'll repay the favor. Once she's laying there and Spanish music is playing in her head, <laughs> then she'll say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna lick these asshole back." <laughs> but you over there making love to her with no. flowers and rubbing her down yeah. like a half a fag. You can't Who do that. Who said anything about you that? Gotta pull her hair and say, "Listen, you little fucking." <laughs> Green card coat, bitch. It's all over for you today. How green fucking you green, <laughs> Jewish style. Thank God her mom doesn't speak English. Who gives a fuck? And you go over and show your mom a dick. When was the last time you did this? Just take out that little Jew rat and show it to mom, mother Do you speak Spanish? Uh, no. Oh, they talk would like shit to. about you all this day, guy, don't they? This oh. fucking guy was thinking of taking a class. What do you think if I take a class on Monday nights? I said, just watch Telemundo. You're not taking no fucking class. Yeah, watch right? Telemundo. You gotta take that. You gotta grab it next week by the throat. Put it against the wall. Are you taking a class? Get a Rosetta Stone, stupid. Yeah, get a Rosetta Stone. That's killer. Wait, take her by the throat. Pick her by the throat and pin her against the wall. Oh my goodness! And tell her this week we ain't making fucking crepes. It's Jew dick all weekend long. That's it. What's what's for dinner? Jew dick. What's for breakfast? Jew dick. 
What's for lunch? <laughs> Jude dick. <laughs> Jude dick is the only thing on the fucking menu this weekend. Then she'll go home and she'll tell them, I don't know what got into him. Yeah. He Jude dick is everywhere. He's, he's a different man. He's crazy. He's not the same. I might leave him. He's shooting he juice sperm all over. Leave him, Lee. I like it, Lee. You all right? Next time she comes up, go, look at my foot. When she comes up, just kick her in the fucking stomach <laughs> with <laughs> Stop. Oh, she? <laughs> oh my God! This is shit you gotta do if you want to love. What are talking about? Look at Eleanor. If you think if you're nice to Eleanor, she's gonna stay. You gotta Ain't abuse no her. fucking way. You gotta abuse her. Call an Irish mallet and shit like that. And that's what makes her stay. <laughs> Women don't want to stay because you give them flowers. Women want to stay because you're a fucking savage, Lee. I like animals. What do you think? So you eat her pussy, but you don't. You got curious about what goes on in her asshole? <laughs> do you sniff it? Do you ever put some nose to that motherfucker? No, I don't. I'm not scared of it, but no, I don't really. You gotta sniff. Well, no, gotta, next why? week that's your homework assignment. When you eat her pussy, you gotta go deep and report back to us <laughs> on Monday night. Oh no! What her ass smells like? Tell that's us. That's never gonna happen. Have you why? even smelt it? Uh, probably. And what's it smell like? Carne no, no. asada. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't. No, no, no. I know. I haven't. I haven't gone in. I'm just saying. I'm probably smelt it. Did you smell it just a little bit? No. Or did you put your whole nose in there. No, like no, no. Oh my god. And when it's oh I did not, I didn't, I didn't do that. That's your homework assignment this week. Oh no! Next Sunday you gotta see. Oh, no. You're thir- you're 26 years old. You gotta smell somebody's ass. You're 26. And I love you to death. I love you to death. If you were my son, I'd be giving you the same advice, because your life's gonna change once you stick your tongue up a woman's asshole. Once your tongue goes an inch up there, and you see how they squirm for their life, <laughs> they start stuttering and shit. Tell him, Eleanor. I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm just thinking about the son who's being told know, that first and start you got, dating your daughter. I don't know. The first time you got a tongue up your ass, how did, did it change you? Did you even know? It did change me. I never understood it, and I, and I turned into a different... I, I turned different into a person. woman. This is what I'm telling you, Lee. It's you know, there's no such thing as puberty. This, it's this asshole licking weekend, changes you're gonna your life. you put him on the stomach and he'll, he'll pussy from behind, and then on the way as you're pulling up, you're just going to yeah, lick really that get in motherfucking there. ass like that. And make that noise. That's yeah, your you gotta get all the way in there. You gotta feel the spokes. You gotta feel. You gotta feel in there. You gotta feel one of those fucking lumps. <laughs> Something in there. You know what I'm saying? They always got a lump in their ass. It's tremendous. I love. It. I don't That's get it. So though. gross. I'm definitely not telling my mom about this podcast. I don't get no. this. I don't get this no more. You know, I love you people at home. It's <laughs> Monday night. What do you want to talk about? Fucking the government and all. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Nothing it, we it can is do what about it. Is. It yeah. is what it is. <laughs> Lisa, yeah, it's here. Eleanor's here. What the fuck else do you want? It's Monday yeah. fucking night, September 15th. Have you thought about that? Have you thought that half the fucking month's over and you're sitting there fucking around? Have you gone to get your Christmas club yet? Oh, boy. Have you signed up for Christmas club yet? Because <laughs> Christmas is around the fucking corner. That's the most important thing, all right? How high are you? I'm fucking high, but I'm aggravated. We got to end this off with a fucking bang. Let me get a little reading for our sponsors here. Let's, Let's start the night off with Honor. I love these motherfuckers. <laughs> Why? Because it's not minerals and supplements. It's, it's life optimization. You get the best out of you. Whether you want to get your mind, the cardio, you want to be the best that you can be. Like the Foo Fighters said, you want the best of you. You understand me? Go to Honor.com. See what they got. Whether it's the fucking Strong Bone. Alpha Brain. Alpha New Brain, mood. which is their trademark. 100% guarantee. On the fucking alpha brain. You understand me? Who gives you that? Even if you eat half the pills, we don't even want the other half. We'll send you your fucking money back. It's going to change how you think. Protein. Hemp force. The chocolate. Delicious. Hemp force. The icy vanilla. Fucking delicious also. Why are you being a mutt? Stop being a fucking mutt. Go to honor.com. See what they got. They got ropes. They got fucking kettlebells. But I'll get you 10% off on minerals and supplements. Go to the box and press in. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And get 10% off your next order on it. Also, they have the Stay On It program. You get 20, 10% off every month. It comes directly to your door. You don't have to order it. You don't have to do that. You understand me? It's great. It's, 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 it's health optimization, as they call it, in many circles. <laughs> Number two. Let me read a good one to you. Dollar Shave Club, all right? Are you a member or not? Is there anything else than buying worse than buying razors? You got to go to the fucking store. You got to stand on line. They got them in a fucking plastic fort, a fucking plastic fortress. They're going to cost you 25 bucks. You don't need that shit. Go to dollarshaveclub.com. For a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club delivers great razors right to your fucking door. 
That The plan starts at $3 a month. Signing up takes two minutes. Sit back and watch the blades arrive like fucking clockwork. There's no membership fee. There's no commitment. There's Ugats. And there's a money back guarantee. You got nothing to lose by trying them. So do me a favor. Stop going to the fucking store and paying 30% more for fucking shitty razors. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash church. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash church. C-H-U-R-C-H to get your Dollar Shave Club sent right to your fucking door, okay? That's how we do it. I don't know how many times I got to tell you. I've been telling you the same fucking broken record for months. And you're still using that piece of shit with the lights and the aloe strip and all that bullshit. You're spending too much money. Do me a favor. Cut this shit. Uncle Joey will tell you. Fuck Lee. He don't shave. He wants to be Fidel Jr. <laughs> Fuck that cocksucker. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash church. That's how we do it. And while we're on it, why fuck around, all right? Don't do it. Listen, that. you're sitting there. You're paying too much money. You're paying too much money for fucking cable. You're paying too much money for everything, if you think about it. Let me save you some money. Go to HuluPlus.com and watch shows on your st- on your fucking schedule, all right? You probably heard of Hulu. You can watch it on anything. And Hulu is so much more. You can watch it on your Roku, Smart TV, Apple TV, Xbox, pretty much any streaming device you own. Go to Hulu Plus to watch tremendous fucking programming. Niche programming, Criterion Collection, animated kids, originals. You can watch Hulu Plus anywhere, anytime. And you know what it is? What? $7.99 a month. Oh, my God. Wow. $7.99 a month. And that's what you get from me. You're saying, Joey, I get the same deal on the commercial. But guess what? I'm giving you two weeks for free on the fucking arm. Because that's how I roll, cocksuckers. So go to HuluPlus.com. Slash Joey. Slash Joey. J-O-E-Y. Get $7.99 a month for original programming. You can watch it on your time. You can binge watch shows. They've got a ton of shows. Revenge, Mistress, The Mindy Project, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Seventh Heaven, Ugly Fucking Betty. All those shows for $7.99 a month. But I'm giving you two weeks for free. Go to HuluPlus.com and press in. Joey. In the box and get what, Lee? Two weeks for free. All right. And $7.99 a month. And also, to one of the Betty Sigs out there in the market, I tried them all. HittySigs.com. If you're looking to quit smoking, they got 0, 8, 16, and 24 milligrams to quit on your own pace. This is the best e-cig on the market. 1,200 guaranteed puff, puffs. 1,200 on more. That's amazing. Yeah. Puff the fucking magic dragon. Can't sink these motherfuckers. You understand me? HittySigs.com. Go there right now. Either get the cigar or get one of the nicotine cigarettes or one of the non-nicotine cigarettes and get what? And get 20% off we use the uh, code word Joey's Church. Joey's Church, 20% off. HittySigs.com. This is the cigar. Next to what you're going to get a cigar, they're going to tell you to go outside, but you bring this and you fucking stump. They don't know who they're dealing with. You understand me? Right. You sit there and you puff on this fucking thing. Tremendous. HittySigs.com. Hulu Plus. Dollar Shave Club. And on dot com. Go there right now. Yeah, Tell them to go shit. fuck their mother in the ass. I'm sorry, mother. I didn't mean to say Your that. Your father's church what's happened now. <laughs> we don't need church and hummus. Only this fucking Benedict Arnold over this here. This I like hummus. I don't like ranch. He eats ranch. Do you not? Oh, you don't eat ranch. So many people eat ranch. They put ranch, ranch on pizza. No, no, no. We She's know. Mexican. She's not no. allowed to. Yeah. She doesn't. She doesn't dip with the wings. What does she dip? She doesn't. She just has it with the hot sauce. Just, she's Mexican. She can. They don't put ranch on no. pizza. I saw oh, that. Oh no, that's terrible. Who does that? A lot of people do that. That's these new fucking Disgusting. They got no respect at their house. <laughs> their parents never told them don't do that. I'll smack you. I'll cut your head you off. That's insane. Put fucking ranch on the pizza, you fucking maggots. Don't ever do that around me, you dirty motherfuckers. <laughs> you put red crushed pepper or garlic right. powder or black Oregano, pepper. Oregano. Some oregano, Parmesan. Parmesan cheese. Very nice. <laughs> very fucking That's it. Nice. Red pepper strong. cheese and oregano. It's fucking strong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eleanor Kerrigan, thank Joe you very Diaz. much for coming. Where, where are you at these next few weeks? Uh, we're in Vegas. We go to Vegas uh, Thursday through Sunday at the Hard Rock every Hotel. Every week? No, just this week. And then back here 
do a couple gigs around town and then off to Australia. And you New have Zealand. a website they can go see you on? I'm doing, I'm getting my website done right now. Thank God. You've so, been doing the yeah. same website for three fucking years. No, I just started it. Because I don't know anything about computer. I grew up in a typewriter Your hands store. Are fucking cold. Bro. Hey, the fucking air conditioner's on in here. Excuse me. fucking hand job. It's you all got over the shop. <laughs> it's ISIS. Oh my God, it's ISIS. <laughs> That's fucking ISIS hand job. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, there, uh, but the thing will be up soon. The and kid's working been, on it right now. When have you been, how long have you been doing comedy by itself? Uh, without waitressing or anything? Without, wor- without a day job, four years. I'm very proud of you. It was scary at first. Oh, you have no fucking idea. And you have to take a chance and dig deep and believe hard in yourself, don't you? Yeah, because I was like, I'm like, uh, back pay on rent, shit like that. Like, he would let me skip, like, thank God willing. I'm Thank just going to be thankful. It's, it's yeah, because he's a good guy. This this place I live now, it's not like a corporate shit. It's like an individual owner. And so he was cool as shit. He's like, take your time when you get caught up. Hey, man, people don't work with you like that. That was hard. So uh, we've talked about the struggle of being a comic at first and just telling yourself one day, I'm not going to do this job no more. I'm going to yeah. do this and Well, I got fired. The so it, it, they fired you from the store? Too? No, no, no. Not the comedy store. I left the comedy store to marry. Dice. <laughs> you married Dice. I was engaged to Dice. Okay. And then I left the store, and we got engaged, and then Freddie passed away. And then that just fucked me up. 2005. June. Yeah. And then that just, that ruined me big time. And then my grandma passed away like 30, 20 days later. And then, like for a whole year, I felt like I was just out of touch, like with everything. And then I left Andrew, or we broke up. And uh, we stayed friends, obviously. And then I started working on the one woman show because Freddie used to say to me, "You should be doing stand up." You guys went to acting class together. Acting everything, yeah. But he was always saying, "You should be doing stand up. You're funny. You should be doing stand up." I'm like, "No, <coughs> I'm not a stand up. Dom Rare is a stand up. Bill Burr is a stand. I'm a jackass. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy talk. But now it's like I get on the same stage with these people. I've gone up." before and after Bill Burr and been a mess <laughs> because he's like one of my favorites so it's and Dom I've never had to follow you yet it's, it's really amazing how that he did this that you got sick and tired of watching you know he yeah. said one day so you free people at home dog it starts your life takes you in weird fucking yeah. avenues sometimes man. and even though it's late it doesn't matter it's never late Look at this fucking guy over here. Look at this right. fucking kosher fucking This biscuit. little pink chick Jew. I How I cute. I love what I do without this motherfucker. Look, I'm stone to the gills. You really I'm are. I'm really proud of you. You know, uh, you, you live your life hearing how rough this is and how tough and how you yeah. do it. And then I just see you make the transition and it just lets me know that there's still savages left in the world. What's so funny is that for you it was Freddie. You know, and I was friends with Freddie. But for me it was Marilyn. Every yeah. time I go to the store, I think about them. Me too. For two or three minutes, and they're probably looking down at us. And the other day, I said something that, this is my computer at home. This is my computer at home, right here. This this four inches. Right here in the cubby hole. I have glasses there, because that's what Cuban people do. Okay. They have glasses that they change every Monday for the spirits. Oh, oh, I see what you nine mean. Yeah, yeah. Glasses there. I only have two. And I have pictures of Dominic Special, a kid who died sophomore year. I have a picture of Anthony Balzano, a kid who died in the eighth grade. I got a picture of Darren Rago, who died in 1999, who was probably, you know, 30-something. I have a picture of my mom. And I have a picture of my friend's kid that died. He gra- she graduated high school on a Friday. She died on Saturday. I'm going mm. to a party Mm-mm. in the car. And I have all their pictures, and the first thing I look at always, at some part of the morning when I'm on the computer, I always look over there. And I do the day for them. Yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I, I was telling Lydia that I wasn't busting these balls. If you go to any of those five people I mentioned and wake them up out of that casket and say, will you ever watch ESPN again? They'll go, never again. I'm going to live my life. Yeah. I got a second chance, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I always think about them. I look at them and I go, if they had a chance to come back, would they sit at a desk all day on a fucking computer? Fuck no. No, they wouldn't. So we have one thing, like my thing, and even for Marilyn, is to hold her dream up in a way. Yeah. To yeah. do what she couldn't do today, you know. Maybe it was to write a joke. God, or maybe was it was funny. to and then with Marilyn it wasn't as much funny as you know, I think God puts people in your lives. 
Marilyn was there the first time I did that way, and she stayed my friend. Yeah. And she always gave me a little advice. And if I tell you something, that today all the advice she gave me came true. She was the one that told me. She had the cancer. I went to her house on a Sunday, and she became really religious. Once the cancer hit her, she was always very religious. Well, yeah, because that, that was our connection. That we used was to your give connection. certain things up for Lent. She gave that things, was our she favorite gave thing. Yeah, all Lent. the time. It was really hard for you us. Know, she used to talk about Heidi Griffin, doesn't like crucifixes, yeah. that he's the devil and all this shit. And one day when she was about that, a lot of people know this, a lot of people don't know this. Right before she was going to die, I went to a house one Sunday. Montoya was there filming her to make a special about her dying or something. And she was talking about that. When she goes back to the comedy store, she's not going to curse. Because every word that comes out of your mouth, you have to be responsible. You have to be responsible. You go to for God it. later yeah. on. And then that same thing, something distracted her. And she looked the other way, and then she goes, Oh, and by the way, you got to stop doing cocaine. And she looked at me in a way that was fucking crazy like it was just like wow okay and maybe it took me maybe six weeks after that to quit doing blow Jesus. but the way she said it to me she was giving me a message from somebody yeah like, quit doing like somebody blow. told her oh and you look, have to tell him yeah and look it all turned out i'm here with you i'm not dead i got a yeah. beautiful two-year-old daughter at the house my mm. wife is happy I, I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for this mm -hmm. men's i morto over here <laughs> Who I love. He's a mezzofinocchia. Look at him. <laughs> but it's amazing that that advice, usually yeah. when people tell you to get off cocaine, you just look at them and go, go fuck yourself. Right. <laughs> that was the first time I looked at it and I said, done. It was the way she said, yeah. And, and for you, it was Freddie. You know, you and Freddie were tight. You know, the He's baby. He's in my pocket. I never perform without him. He's always in my pocket. How fucking crazy is that? I always keep Freddie in my pocket. So for me, the comedy store was also about that. Once I went off on Jeff that day and I walked outside and Dice and Johnny Sands were looking at me weird, like this motherfucker's really crazy, I was like, I'd give that. And it was Marilyn laughing the whole way. Oh, know? yeah. And uh, that's what the comedy store's always been to me. It's always been like a, I got this crazy bond. Do you know I was pulling away and I was stuck there to make the left? Yeah. Down that street to make the right. To make the other left to get back on Laurel Canyon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I was looking at that building. I can't imagine that street without that building. Uh-uh. And they're taking House of Blues down so we get our our view back. I don't know what they're going to put there instead. They're going to put an office building. Probably. Like but it's just amazing. You never forgot Freddie and I never forgot no, Marilyn never Martinez. Will. So there you have it. That's why the comedy Latinos. show is special <laughs> to uh, many of people. I love you guys. And Eleanor, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you, guys. Follow Eleanor on uh, Twitter. What's your handle? EJ Kerrigan. EJ motherfucking Kerrigan. EJ. And follow her on Facebook, Eleanor Kerrigan. Eleanor Kerrigan, And yeah. follow Lee Syed on Twitter. What is it? The Flying Jew? No, just Lee Syed. And I love you guys. Don't forget this weekend I'm at the Brea Improv. Thursday the 18th, Friday the 19th, and Saturday the 20th. Two shows Friday and Saturday. But next weekend, we're taking it back. Uh -oh. To where the devil got fucked in the ass and fucking pepper sprayed New York City. Yeah. To Gotham Comedy Club, 1145, both Friday and Saturday Shut nights. The Tickets are still on sale. Shut the window. Do We're going to Ustream Lee into the fucking green room <laughs> and televise him there. But I love you guys. Thank you for watching the Monday night, late night podcast. And for you people, Tuesday morning, have a fucking great day when you're listening to this. Stay black and stay beautiful. Stay proud. Now that the show's over, don't forget to sign up for your free trial of Hulu Plus. Hulu Plus lets you binge on thousands of hit shows anytime, anywhere on your TV, PC, smartphone, or tablet. Support this podcast and get an extended free trial of Hulu Plus when you go to HuluPlus.com slash Joey or go to JoeyDiaz.net and click on the Hulu Plus banner. And don't forget to sign up for DollarShaveClub.com. Get a high-quality razor sent to your door every month for a fraction of what you pay at retail. Now go to DollarShaveClub.com forward slash church. Or just go to joeydiaz.net and click on the Dollar Shave Club banner. So it's also sponsored by Onnit.com. Use code word church to get 10% off on things like Alpha Brain, New Mood, Troom Tech Immune. Uh, this, and lastly, the show is sponsored by hitesigs.com. Use code word Joey's Church to get 20% off of awesome vape pens. The proof is in the e-cig. Better tasting, longer lasting. <laughs>